All right. <laughs> Third time's the charm. And... <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the 100th episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I am your host, Perry. I've been with you for 100 weeks now, and I'm just, um, I'm done. It's over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you all so much for sticking around for this many episodes. I've got Curtis with me. I've got Swan with me. And returning to the podcast for the first time since episode 37. It's way too long ago. Tanner. Cheney. It's me. I did. I almost uh, said your middle initial. The baby. Oh yeah, that which was Bourbon I, I, Boy. Yeah. <laughs> the Bourbon Boy is back. Yeah, yeah. Baby Bourbon Boy has, has returned. returned to the show um, to celebrate a hundred episodes. I figured it was only appropriate. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, man, welcome back. Thanks so much for for coming back too. Yeah, uh, this is. This is my contractual it's, obligation. It's you get one yeah. time, you use it now, you use it every, wisely. Every, every 100 episodes, yeah. you return. You get one. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a lot to get through on this episode, um, but we do have to start out with the, the, the segment that we always do, which is Flying Blind. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys what this is and the reason that I poured this for you. Uh, this is Weller Antique 107. Yes. This was the first bourbon we ever had on the podcast. No way. Yeah, this was the, the first, very first, the very really? first pour from episode one. So I figured it was. This was the first pour. This was the first pour as we were getting ready for our uh, bottled and bond blind flight challenge. Oh you yeah, were real strong out of the gate. <laughs> well, episode two we reviewed William Larue Weller, so <laughs> that was way too much. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was a mistake in and of itself. I mean, we gave it a good review. We knew it was good. We just didn't really seem to know why. Yeah. <laughs> we weren't at that level yet. No, not and, quite. And for that throwback take, that's why I'm here. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm going to be you all 30 or 70 episodes ago. It's cool. Fun, yeah. I, when uh, we were talking about Tanner being on the episode, he was like, well, I haven't had a whole lot of bourbon recently. And it's I was true. like, cool. <laughs> I've had a bottle of bullet in my kitchen for about six months now. Just unfinished. Well... So I'm definitely fit to be on this podcast right now. <laughs> uh, what you've been drinking recently is going to be a lot of fun. But yeah. anyway, I'll say to you guys, cheers. And thank you so much for being around for uh, the, these 100 episodes. Um, it's been a highlight of my week for the past two years. Oh. And I've really enjoyed uh, getting to spend this time with you guys. Less so Tanner because he's not been around for a while. But no, I'm just kidding. And also he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> also he sucks. Get out of my house. He didn't terrible. like him when he was here. <laughs> no, but anyway, cheers to 100 to cheers. 100 more. I want to let's drink some bourbon. No, I have not had 107 in a while either. Yeah. Holy crap. How long ago? About I mean, when I say ago. a while, it's probably yeah. Um, I had some it, on the E.H. Taylor episode. When I tried to make my four grain and it was a terrible that's mistake. That's right. Yeah. Actually, you know what? That's probably why this bottle is still out because I haven't put it away from that episode yet. Yeah. So it's a lot gosh, better on was, its own. Yeah. <laughs> Quite a bit. I I hate, and this goes back. Gosh, I feel like we've been having this conversation for a hundred episodes, but I hate that it's so hard to find this anymore. Oh yeah. But if if it were easy to find, um, this would easily be on my daily drinker list. I feel like a, uh, a very small child it's when I'm holding bottle. this, uh, this handle of Massive. 107. Um, it looks, <laughs> it's very big. Anyway, quality content for this 100th episode. I feel yeah. like we're doing episode one all over again. <laughs> Where's our rock band mics? I'm all nervous. And yes. anxious. I almost thought about bringing back, uh, the, the mics that we used <laughs> for the first few episodes and just seeing if I could make it sound a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> or just leaving it exactly the way it was. I still but, stand by that 107 way better than uh, just the special reserve. But also, I think it's I think it's I think it's above than the Weller 12. Yeah, I agree. Still haven't been able to find CYPB. Well, I mean, CYPB is kind of never going to be found. But the foolproof I haven't been able to find yet. Yeah, but keep which fingers is some, crossed. Tim Jones gonna, is a person we should talk to about that. Yes, we should if we could. But. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tim Jones, I know you're listening to the show. 
shoot me a message. Oop. Sorry. Just my mic. No, it's all good. Rookie mistake. <laughs> it's okay. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. I forgot how to move glass. Even though, even though you've been, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't cease to exist. You didn't keep me in some urn. Wouldn't that be funny? And release me for the episode. Just for 60, 63 episodes, you were just gone. <laughs> you just <laughs> didn't do exist. I don't yeah. think it would be very funny. Existed. No, I don't mean funny. Ha ha. But never mind. Anyway, guys, what have you been drinking recently? <laughs> I'll go first. Right. Um, I have. I've been drinking uh, Knob Creek Single Barrel. Me too. Any anyone oh, yeah. in particular, or just the off the shelf? Just the off the shelf uh, Knob Creek. Interesting. Thing. Yeah. And it's been really good. It's honestly something that I usually don't pick up, but lately I've really been enjoying it, liking the more of the bold, more of the you know hotter notes of yeah. of Knob Creek and like Booker's and uh, all you know more of the like Jim Beam products. We'll have a little bit of Booker's, yeah, later on too. But so, I've really been enjoying it. Yeah, I I don't give enough credit to the off the shelf single barrel. Just because we spend so much time drinking the the picks, but it is nice every once in a while to kind of come back to that and see what the the, the baseline is for you know what makes it a solid product that's going to be on the shelf, and what do we have to kind of compare those single barrel picks to. Um, that being said, though, I've really not had a bad single barrel from Knob Creek <laughs> ever. They've all been solid, um, but I do need to spend some time. Going back to that single barrel. Well, I think we've all kind of decided that picks are somewhat the way to go on a lot of those kind of things. Well, yeah, I Just mean, because there's so much time that's put into it. And yeah, like and I mean, out. you're 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 either getting, you know, for forty five dollars a nine year single barrel, or potentially um, a pick for the same money that's fourteen, 14 years, years, fifteen years, like it's been recently. Um, and that's kind of going away a little bit, just because they're running out of some of their older stock. Yeah, um, but. Yeah, ideally, I would rather spend that money on the the actual barrel picks than the straight off the shelf single barrel. Yep. But anyway, Swan, you said you were also drinking. Yeah, I'm really stuck on that Bourbon Karma pick. It's yeah, so dude. good. And it's I, good. I grabbed a because, like you said, why would I get a nine year if I can get a fourteen year? Well, I actually bought another thirteen year and I blinded it with uh, two of the nine year picks. I have just a regular release with no pick, and then the Bourbon Karma about nine year pick. And then a, like a twelve to thirteen year pick. Yeah, I picked the Bourbon Karma one out of the, out of the lineup. That's awesome. Yeah, which is wild because you think age would definitely be something you'd be gravitating towards. Not with those, man. Sometimes you just get a honey barrel and it's great. Mm-hmm. And it, Again, it matter the age. Shout out to Tim Gunderman for picking a fantastic nine year old barrel. I mean that that was right on the money as far as those go. Tanner, what's up? <laughs> What bourbon have I drank in the last, like, what, year and a half? Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, we're talking <laughs> yeah, about... Yeah, you've got a lot of catching up to do in <laughs> this case. That's true. I don't know if I've had anything, like, super noteworthy. Um, but I've had an interesting, not a bourbon specifically. That's okay. If it but, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be bourbon. Well, with it, it was with Bullet, but there are these ice cubes that are pre-made old fashions. Have you heard of these? What? Okay. A little bit of a backstory. Okay, so no, I have not heard of these. Uh, I brought something to the podcast. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I was worth something. That's what he's been doing for the past year and a half. He's been researching for it. <laughs> what does yeah. Terry not know? Uh, <laughs> Google, not very helpful at all. Um, I think I'm talking about Perry Como, which is a very weird thing. Anyway. <laughs> Sometimes uh, Perry Mason. I never even <laughs> talked to Perry, so I don't even know. You would think that'd be the first source. But no. Nope. Nah, Google. For yeah. sure. Oh, Perry Ritter. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway. Uh, so my mom is a big fan of Adam Carolla, who does this like, Basically like a loot box or one of those kinds of things, but they're for drinks because he has his own wine. So in it, there's like his wine, his bottle of wine is like the marquee thing. And then there's other just little accoutrements, if you will. Uh, I threw as much stupid stank on that word as I could. Um, Thank you. But one of the things that came with it, my mom's not a bourbon drinker. And uh, she, there were these little ice cubes. I forget the name of the company. Um, but they were pre-made old-fashioned mix. So basically you just... Put bourbon in like a shaker, you mix it together, and then as it melts, it becomes an old fashioned. They were awesome. Hmm, they good. were like ten dollars for six of them, so a little overpriced in my opinion, but they were great. Um, I really, really enjoyed. Wait, them. wait, wait, whoa, whoa! Ten dollars for, for six, six cubes. The... How okay. big were the cubes? Like, like they regular sized ice cubes? Not a regular or... sized ice cube, but not necessarily like a rocks. Not, not like not like a big cube. It was somewhere in the middle. Um, so you made like size. six strings. I, 
It's not bad. Maybe ten bucks wasn't that bad. Pretty, actually, that, I think that's actually pretty. It might have been more Think than about that, it. But... Yeah, if you were to buy them individually, yeah, bitter, simple syrup, all that kind of stuff. Hold on, let me, yeah, let me check the price. it's going to be about. I'll get back to you on the probably price. Probably ten. It might have been. That might have been an undersight. But anyway, but you'll get way more quantity. So that's right. yeah. But I mean, if you're looking for something, it, it kind of feels like a party trick, almost. You know, and it's something that nobody else is really doing. When you're or. A lot of people might not know about. Yeah. I feel like ten dollars for kind of the novelty of it for that many. I mean that that kind of seems like a steal to me. I, I'm a little surprised that it wasn't. Sorry, it was eighteen dollars. My bad. Um, I was wrong. Honestly, that's three dollars. Yeah, still three dollars a cube. It's not. That I'll bad. say it's a little expensive. No. Have you guys seen what Glenn Levitt did? Oh yeah. yeah with oh the, the Tide Pods. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Those are. That's so funny. That's bizarre. It is bizarre, but it's, I think that it's but intriguing. It, but who is the market for that? Us. I love gushers. Us? What are you talking Isn't about? Though? Yeah, I would. I don't know. I would I don't know if it's one. us. I like. I mean, yes, I would try it, but I don't know if it's specifically made to be sold to me. You know? Oh mm. no. Is it going to start a revolution <laughs> of of alcohol packaging? <laughs> no. I mean, what what is the end no. game with this? Sorry, why am I so upset about this? It was something. It was something cool Strict they could make, court. and they thought we'll market it afterward. It's just yeah. like, oh, we can make. Oh, they this? work backwards. Right. On yeah, it. yeah, absolutely. Let's try to make it, yeah, and then yeah. oh, we'll pitch it to somebody. Yeah. God, could you imagine the and guy I also in that think poor that... pitch meeting? <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> All right. Picture this. Here me Tide out. pods, but whiskey, yeah. <laughs> and also safe to drink. We want to make sure that's yeah. said. So yeah, no. you're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. I mean, maybe. I guess you could. I wonder how they taste. Do you think like the, sure. the res- do you think like it stays on your tongue? That's my worry. Is that like the little flimsy packaging would just stay on your tongue? It's got to because I mean, how would you make something like that that the alcohol just wouldn't eat through? Like, that's a good point. It, I didn't think about the alcohol part. Yeah. But yes. Can you digest it? I hope so. I mean, <laughs> what are you gonna do? Spit <laughs> yeah. it out? I'm sure it dissolves. I think it's like biodegradable. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they said that in the uh, like the little minute and twenty ad I saw. Everything about this just boggles my mind. Yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> I do think it's probably targeted I, towards more of your like a high class. I thought like, you were about to say your just... generation, and I was like, <laughs> I mean, you are older. Yeah, but we're also <laughs> wow. we're both millennials, bud. Fair. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. Joking. What are you talking? About? I'm just joking. <laughs> yes, I'm ancient. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of tension in the room. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah, we're fine. Okay. Good. I'm happy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Tide Pods for whiskey. Very yes. strange concept. Will it take off? Who's to say? No, Probably not. It most definitely won't. Time but it'll be, it'll be nice to see. <laughs> Time I want to I wanna try it, but I know what would happen. I'd put it in my mouth. I'd try it, and I'm like, ooh, still scotch. <laughs> like, I, yeah, well, if they true. did it for bourbon, I would definitely try it. Yeah. I just can't imagine that it would be something that I would buy regularly. No. Oh, no. You I don't buy think it that's for a the party once and yeah. then tries one and that's it. Mm. I mean, we would... It's bottles leaking. We and would, I, I don't even know if they'll probably... They probably won't produce it, like mass produce it or anything. That I doubt it'll become say, man. pretty like, available. Yeah. It might be a draw to the distillery. Who knows? Could be. Oh, you can only try it there. Mm. It's actually a good idea. I don't know. So, um, before I get into uh, this this next bottle... I'll wrap up what we've been drinking recently. Uh, I led a tasting last night uh, for uh, a company, and uh, it was a three-pour tasting. It was four rows of small batch Knob Creek rye, Hmm. which I had not really had before last night, and then had it and found out that it's stupid good. Oh, yeah. it's No, it it is a a really good product for that price range and, and for that age of rye, and it's 100 proof. So, I mean, it's going to hold up. It tastes a little bit more like a bourbon, but, you know, that the 51% rye in the mash bill, I mean, it really does, you know, help out with some of the spiciness. But, oh, and then the, the last one uh, was a New Riff single barrel. And, uh, I mean, New Riff has done no wrong. Um, Swana actually went back and watched uh, the review that you and I did of New Riff Bottled and Bond. Oh, yeah? Did we do Chad. all right? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry? Did we do Okay. No, we did great. Yes. We did great. Because I love it so much, and I don't want to give it any negative marks. So, to, to put this into perspective for you, that was last August. Who? Yeah. <laughs> Feels like a month ago. It, in, in as much, looking at you, it was like a before and after picture. I mean, yeah. quite, quite literally. And I just want to say I'm proud of you for... <laughs> 
taken care of yourself over the past year. But, but anyway, that's, that's another topic. Uh, anyway, it was a really cool tasting. Um, I think I'm going to kind of start offering that up to people if they want to have, you know, tastings led by us or me, uh, through the podcast. Um, just because I had a lot of fun with it and, you know, I'd like to, I'd definitely like to do more of it. Um, so if that's something that interests you, give me a holler. We'll kind of price it out, make it happen, but I'm, I'm interested in doing more of those. Let's talk about this bottle, though, that I'm about to open, because I'm worried that it's going to uh, do what happened with the... I'm so excited. With the first one. Yeah, I'm, um, actually, I'm like, you pulled it yeah, out yeah, probably yeah. about so, like five so minutes this, ago. And this like, is an Elijah Craig small batch, uh, back age stated, 12 years old. Uh, it, the first bottle of this I had, I opened up on a live stream on YouTube, and the plastic part of the stopper separated from the cork. And so I don't know if that's going to happen this time. I can't even get a grip Not on it. Not a good sign. Ah. It seems to be together. Bring it home, Perry. Well, there it is. Jeez. Wow, that was... It really expanded in the bottle. We're safe. We're good. But I wanted to open this uh, because, you know, everything tonight is going to be like special pours uh, because we are in the, the middle of a very special episode. Speaking of special things, we got a couple of announcements. Uh, that we're going through on this episode. Uh, the first one, of course, was that Tanner was back for episode 100. Yeah, enjoy that one. The second one... <laughs> Real big announcement there. Yeah. <laughs> it was a surprise to everybody, I, I think. Including me. I don't know how I got here. <laughs> <laughs> we bound and gagged you. <laughs> Whoa. And knocked you, knocked you out. I forgot to mention that part. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> we're just whiskey pods. <laughs> lots and lots of whiskey pods. Yeah. <laughs> um, the first big announcement is that we are going to be doing our very first fundraiser uh, through the podcast. Uh, it is going to be through Movember, who is a company uh, or an organization, rather, that focuses on men's health, men's mental health. Um, I make no secret that uh, anxiety and depression is something that I have dealt with for all of my life. And um, having a resource like Movember around is something that is really important to me and the fact that it is being targeted towards men as well uh, who is a group of individuals that really don't talk enough about those kinds of issues and so by investing in organizations that do these kinds of things raising awareness uh, providing help for folks uh, who are not just dealing with uh, mental health issues but also uh, just with health issues, cancer, um, you know, things, things like that. It, it is really important to me uh, to see this uh, uh, treated well and to give them the opportunity to grow and to maintain all the operations that they have been able to, you know, do over the past, gosh, however many years that they, they've been around. But so uh, that link uh, will be provided to you on November 1st. Uh, the fundraiser will last all the way until November 30. 100% of the proceeds, of course, are going to go to November. Um, we might have a little bit more about this uh, in the next coming weeks, uh, but I am super, super excited about this. This is something that's kind of been on my, on my mind, on my heart, um, really since day one of the podcast. And, you know, I, I've always said, you know, as soon as it felt right, we were going to do something to kind of give back. And this was, you know, just kind of a no brainer for me. Um, so we'll, more about that, of course, in the coming weeks. Uh, but again, Movember fundraiser, I uh, cannot wait for it. Um, yeah. So anyway, this Elijah Craig 12 year. <laughs> you remember how hot the last one like had on the nose doesn't smell like that it doesn't at all. have this this is elijah craig through and through i, like I mean I, I, how i've been talking about elijah craig for so long is that you know it's what i i feel like bourbon should be you know if if somebody goes what are you what are you looking for in a bourbon i'll go well drink elijah craig and that's going to be you know the a good indicator yeah and based on the nose at the very least Oh, it's based kinda... off the palate, too. Oh, have you already tasted I've it? I've already had it a few yeah. times, yeah. <laughs> a few times. 
I see why people miss this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and you know, the, st- the heat's still there, though. Some of the residual heat just a little bit. It is, but I don't think that it is. It's playing really nicely in tandem with the, the flavors on the palate. It kind of does what Booker's does a little bit, where some of the heat is like kind of intense, but a lot of it is just like kind of that barrel spiciness yeah. mm-hmm. that hits. And it's also more of a, that warming effect, too. Yeah. Yeah. Tanner made a face. I did. No, I was just, I was analyzing. Um, it's very, it's a weird dichotomy of like, smokiness but also vanilla yeah it's a very interesting like mm-hmm. split that i've never really experienced before They're both very intense there's a it's very strange but there's like a green vegetable note that i get towards the end of the palate as well mm. that's Which actually green kind of vegetable <laughs> i'm gonna need specifics we're talking green beans long we're talking, beans we're talking yeah. green beans like, un- like, like steamed green beans and, and actually lunch. i'm kind of <laughs> nice I am actually getting a little bit of green apple on there, too, towards the end of the palate. Kind of that caramel yeah. covered. I've got green the green apple. apple. I can get on board with that. I'm not sure if I'm on the green beans one yet. It was a weird note that I found, but I'm staying. Staying true. <laughs> I'm staying with it. Stick to my guns. 100 episodes in. <laughs> Remember when you had that note of watermelon? Just looking back to the old podcast, and we just thought it was so strange. Mm-hmm. And then looking at the tasting notes and watching the It's Bourbon Night video for the Old Forester, that was one of the the nose notes that they had mm-hmm. on there was melon. It doesn't seem that crazy now, but when it, the first time you said watermelon, I was like, this man is insane. <laughs> In what three, is he talking about? In 300 episodes, when you all finally taste tomato soup for the first time, <laughs> I will finally be vindicated. Yeah. That is a, a, a reference to a joke of that, that was <laughs> on an exist. episode that never actually uh, saw the light of day. I I have no idea where that file even is. Oh, I don't blame. I mean, you. it's so, so it's ago. probably somewhere on my hard drive, but I'll find it. I'll dig it up. Right. Patreon will hear it. Yeah, just clip that part <laughs> out. I swear to you, I tasted tomato soup. So one of the big things, of course, with um, doing a hundred episodes is you know I kind of get a little bit. Get a little mushy, get a little bit retrospective and everything and start thinking about the fact that we've (laughs) put so much time into this. And I wanted to talk about not just with, you know, things that you love creating, but also with bourbon, how important perseverance is and how important it is to stick with it and and really find what, what is important to you with bourbon um, or with what you love to do. I mean, this was something that, you know, for me kind of went hand in hand and I didn't even really realize it until about 50 episodes in where I was like, I love this. (laughs) And as soon as everything really connected, you know, I I just really realized how much passion I have for this and and how much I enjoy just the creative process that, that goes into it. And then, you know, as I was thinking about, one of the reasons that I love bourbon so much is that it's a long game. It takes a long time. I mean, it is not an overnight deal. Um, But we'll, we'll start with bourbon and talk about perseverance with that. But like, is the long game important to you guys as well? I mean, is it something that, you know, makes you enjoy bourbon a little bit more? And I know that there are like, there are other spirits that are aged a lot longer. I mean, you've got scotches that are, frequently 20 to 25 30 years old but with bourbon you know it may not be that long but there's still a waiting period behind it yeah i mean i think that you know the long game with bourbon i mean the flavors that you get from the it aging in the barrel for so long you don't get that with any other spirit and i think that's uh, a testament of it being patient and being waiting uh for to drink all these kind of bourbons and also just knowing that th- there's a select amount of bourbon right within that. Uh, I think that's really cool. Uh, and even past bourbon itself, like, it's, I mean, I don't want to like bring in like a kind of like a life principle that like anything worth having is like worth waiting for yeah. type kind of deal. Uh, but I definitely, there's think, also some life principles that we're kind of getting into with this yeah, conversation. I, too, I figured so. that's where you're kind of going with this. Uh, <laughs> So, I, I mean, I think that bourbon in the long game, for most, a lot of 
just the life in general is that's what really reaps the benefits and you know persevering through you know work or your career and stuff like yeah. that i think that's uh so yeah i think long game is is really important i'm i'm very much a, a trial and error learner a trial and error person like i never get it right on the first try i have to to fail upwards <laughs> to <laughs> yeah. to get you know better at anything that i do and i totally recognize that with bourbon makers as well i mean there's no there's no way that the first time jimmy russell created a barrel of bourbon it was magic you know i mean maybe maybe it was maybe i'm totally off the mark here but at every step of the way is a learning opportunity i feel like and, you know, without saying, didn't do so great on this one, I'm just going to have to do better the next time. You know, I, it, it, it's not, without that that idea, you know, nothing's ever going to get accomplished. <laughs> I was just thinking about being a master blender and, like, how many incorrect times would oh, you... Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, talk about failing and finally getting it right. I mean, yeah. I'm sure Dixon, the first time he was blending stuff, was like me at the E.H. Taylor episode. I'm like, I'm a little bit of this, splash of this. It's going to be great. And then taste mm-hmm. it, and you're like, ooh, this is a hot mess. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, it's just it's, it's a slow grind. I mean, I think slow grind for what I've kind of brought to the table was, you know, whole the finding aspect of bourbon. I mean, I started looking for Weller just like everyone else, and that's great when you finally find it you're like this is amazing and then you're like what's the next thing well at 107 12 yeah wlw and when you finally get your hands on that and you've spent the time getting it and not paying secondary but actually like waiting in line getting your name called it's just like absolute euphoria and it's worth waiting for because i mean when i got the first bottle of wlw for you guys to try granted second episode we can return back to that at any point yeah, we didn't have to wait long for that one yeah uh but that's the you thing might is have, though. i had been looking for it for almost a year year and a half probably at that point and i finally got a bottle and uh perry actually actually had a loss in the family at the time and i was just like this is gonna be special for him so we got it for him and you guys tried it and it was great it was definitely worth the wait and I'm sure that they do that a lot in the bourbon industry, whether it's putting it in the barrel like Castle and Key and waiting four and a half years and hoping it's fantastic, or people putting out products that are like experimental and kind of finding out when the sweet spot is or even if it's going to taste good, you know, five months to 10 years from now. It's all a trial and error and waiting game. You got to be patient for it. It is so not funny it's weird that you bring up when you got that bottle for me mm-hmm. for us rather right around the time that you you got that you said somebody had passed away in my family it was my grandfather mm-hmm. actually that was two years ago yesterday yeah oh wow <laughs> wow jeez <laughs> that's super super weird mm. anyway yeah william Leroy weller's really good <laughs> <laughs> no doubt <laughs> I think Both years. <laughs> oh, sorry. I think, too, that, like, from a looking at a bunch of stuff on the shelf, I think, you know, the long game does affect where I'm going to lean. Like, if I see similar price points for, like, a, a six-year and a ten-year or something, I don't know. Yeah. But, like, I, I'm i going to lean toward the age just because, like, oh, I want to I want to try the older thing. And I think, also, it, it builds sort of this weird inherent trust that, like, if a brand can do something and wait ten years to put it out, it's probably pretty decent. Um, so I think it's you interesting. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, you would, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're going to have to bottle it either way, I guess you're kind of committed at that point. Um, but maybe not, but, uh, yeah, I just, I think it's a really interesting, like marketing standpoint of seeing that and just immediately going, okay, well at least it's lasted that long. And you hope to that. And, and it's of course all subjective, but you hope to that they really do have faith in that product they're putting out. Sure. You know, I mean that, yeah. that is, <laughs> At the end of the day, I mean, if you don't like it, you know, that's that's totally fine. That's on you. But, you know, you, you would hope you kind of assume that the, the master distillers, the the higher ups in the company have put out something that they really do have faith in. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and- the, the, the waiting game is like it's one of the most important aspects of, of bourbon. Yeah. And that was an aspect that we talked about with uh, Cave from Rabbit Hole mm-hmm. at Bourbon and Beyond. We were talking to him and he was saying... You know, I could 
source this. I could do, you know, and and just take a recipe that I've already had or something like that. But he takes the time to specifically right. pick the uh, ingredients, pick the the amount, and make the mash bill, and then wait the years that it's required to wait. He doesn't want. He wants it to be his own, and uh, that. So I mean, that ties in with that as well. Yeah, and and I think it's uh, it's something kind of important to note too that um, the the people that we kind of hold in high esteem aren't always right. And there's actually a, a, a really specific example uh, to this. Um, Fred Minnick, a friend of the show, no one love, um, he went to Peerless and tried their bourbon when it was two years old. He said, this is great. You need to put this out right now. They totally disagreed with him. Let it sit for another year in the barrel, and it's a fantastic product. Now, I don't have anything to kind of you know measure it yardstick-wise, you know, on what the two year old bourbon tasted like. Yeah. But I, I am a fan of what it tastes like at three years old. And you, it cost aside, whatever, would I have been able to say that at two years old? Who's to say? But, you know, now I know it's a really, really solid product that they're putting out. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some. Yeah, that's right there. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I, it's, it's kind of a weird thing to talk about too, but like for me, bourbon has been, this sounds super cheesy. I'm sorry. Bourbon has been kind of a source of inspiration for me to, for kind of pushing through with this. I mean, like I haven't done it a hundred weeks straight. (laughs) I've had weeks that I've had to take off things, you know, life happens and everything, but yeah, there have been moments where I've been like, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Like, just just very, very honest with you guys. But if I hadn't pushed through all that, I wouldn't be sitting here recording episode 100 and going, you know, it, it's it's been an incredible ride for 100 episodes. And, and, you know, I think that's kind of a lesson that I've learned <laughs> over the past two years is how important it is to stick with something. You know, I mean, I've never been an easy quitter, but this just kind of reinforced that notion of <laughs> you got to keep it up, you know. And I, I want to say, too, it, a part of that has been in response to the way that you listeners have latched onto the show and, and taken ownership in it, too. I mean, it, it's not been without reason um that (laughs) or or without you know feedback that i've continued doing this show and and allowed it to improve and allowed it to kind of shape itself organically um throughout these 100 episodes because i mean how much has this show changed (laughs) from episode one i mean not not even just in content but you know in audio quality i mean we were we we were sitting around with with rock band microphones yeah yeah legitimately (laughs) rock band microphones. like the video game rock band was the microphone that i used for the first however many episodes circa like oh (sighs) five the audio quality of 2005 for the ps2 (laughs) that's what started your listening ears in 2017 (laughs) but to now i mean doing Permanently beyond music festivals, yeah, leading to tasting. The people that we've gotten to meet, that's been crazy too. I mean, we got to sit down with Willie Nelson's granddaughter. Yeah, home, oh, I did. Yeah, yeah, you at, did. at Hometown Rising, Raylan awesome. Nelson. She was awesome. I got to sit down with Rod Stewart's daughter and talk about how she was her her bandmate was just sitting on the front steps at Rod Stewart's house, and Ron Wood just walks up. <laughs> And then they go in and play Gasoline Alley. And then their first gig is at the Hotel Cafe in, in L.A. That's awesome. Like, it's just it, the, the amount of things that I didn't ever think were going to happen with a show that have happened absolutely have just blown my mind. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I went off on a, on a tangent a little bit, but it's just been it's been so rewarding for me to see 
this become what it is. And not only is it, you know, thanks to the listeners, but you guys have stuck with me for, for this long to Tanner. Definitely. A little young. <laughs> Read it back. Um, but uh, speaking of the listeners, uh, we're going to take a little break. You all sent in some stories, some memories, uh, some of your favorite moments uh, from the first 100 episodes. Uh, so I wanted to take a, a little bit. Uh, we're going to play out those uh, voicemails and we'll be right back with you. Harry, congratulations. 100 episodes. That's amazing. Believe me, I know. Um, we've got a long way to go before we get there. I've been listening to you since episode number one. You're absolutely amazing. We really enjoy listening. Um, I'm a, uh, I'm a uh, subscriber, and I'm definitely a, a Patreon you just keep doing what you're doing, my friend. We love listening. It's a blast every week. Uh, love what you do. Keep going, my friend. Love you. Bye. Dr. Ritter. Hello, sir. This is Ian. I don't know really how to start this, but I guess my favorite memory of the show would probably be the beginning, the beginning of time, when my cousin introduced me to the world of podcasts. And I'd already been collecting bourbon for quite a number of years. And then I got introduced to your lovely voice and the lovely voices of Curtis and Swan. Yeah, I, I have to say that, that, that this is my bourbon podcast really, really opened my eyes to the, the community of, of whiskey and bourbon. And I didn't realize how many people share the same passion that I do. So it's been really fun. And, and your meetup really introduced me to, Amazing people like Monica and, and her husband, Mike, and her son, who are just amazing people. And I cherish their friendship and uh, the friendship of people like yourself and other members of the community that are close to us. And so, so yeah, that's my favorite memory. And I always like to share that. It's awesome. And uh, I just definitely want to say I hope this comes to air, but I appreciate you. I appreciate everybody that I've met, and uh, I love you all. So thanks. Yeah, bye. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Will, and I've got my co-host here, The Grease, and we're calling to wish Perry a happy 100th episode. That's right. You're the lucky caller. You're the lucky 100th caller. We're going to gift you a handful of soil. Okay. Uh, Grease. <laughs> From a distillery. I thought you were going to talk about wolves. Oh, no, I didn't know. Well, you were going to tell me if that I was pitched it to you. Oh. <laughs> I'm very into wolves right now, Perry, and I just want you to know that next week on Wolf Wednesday, which is what I'm naming every Wednesday for the next year, um, I'm going to do that in your honor. So next Wednesday is going to be Perry Wolf Wednesday. And basically what I do is I just wear a shirt with a wolf on it, and, uh, you know, and I just give proper – proper uh you know what i'm trying you know what i'm trying proper respect where it's due because i don't know if you knew this or not but wolves were here before we were in america all right perry that's uh gonna do it for this week on our congratulatory call uh we hope you enjoy this hundredth episode i bet the title is going to be this is my hundredth episode because he, he does like this in my bourbon podcast yeah but, totally yeah. yeah and uh congratulations He's great with branding congratulations and Stay in your lane. Is that is that how we want to end this? Well, I don't. Uh, we didn't discuss a tagline. Oh shoot. Okay. Uh, I will just cheers. I will just say this, Perry. Congratulations, buddy. Remember to wear deodorant um, because you don't want to smell bad leading into the next hundred episodes. I know this. All right. That's that's it. All right. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Hey, Perry. Uh, Matt and I would like to wish you congratulations on 100 episodes. Uh, coming from a different point of view with being able to meet you at Whiskey Weekend Batch 1 and then uh, then getting into your podcast, it's kind of had a little different point of view for me because it's just like catching up with you every weekend as a friend. And then having the uh, Southern Whiskey Society recap where you were Nice enough to have Nat and I on where we got to talk and get to know you. It was uh, really special. So here's to, here's to 100 more. Yeah, this is James Wolverton. One of my favorite memories from This Is My Bourbon podcast is the Perry Pour. It's actually really entered my lexicon 
any time I accidentally pour, see someone, you know, be a little more generous than they should, first thing out of my mouth or my friend's mouth is Perry Pour. Great stuff, fun, makes the podcast really fun and enjoyable and informative at the same time. Looking forward to the next 100 shows. Keep up the good work. Hey, everybody. It's Papa Ritter here. So, writing. This is my bourbon podcast 100th episode. So proud of you, Perry. You've done a great job. It's so great to listen to all your fun guests and even me for nine episodes. I hope you all didn't get tired of listening to me. But uh, you're doing a great job. Proud of you. You've got 100 plus, plus, plus more in you. And uh hope to be on at least nine more. But cheers. Love you. And thanks, everybody, for listening. We will be seeing you soon and having a Perry Pour. Bye. Hey, Bear. It's your favorite Australian. Um, congrats on 100 episodes. This is awesome, awesome news. But, you know, the best episode was when we were on, of course. We will see you and everyone else next year. Okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, Dave here. It's uh, Chris Tatch from Australia. Might, uh, congratulations on the 100th episode. Might, uh, really good to see that uh, it's coming along so far. You're uh, starting to get all your uh, media samples and everything now. Uh, stay tuned for getting our uh, sample bottle from our barrel. Uh, we'll look after you for there. Uh, but also, uh, favourite episodes got to be uh, when you've always got uh, Papa Ritter on. They're always good value. But also, uh, we uh, enjoyed it when we were on episode last year. Pity we couldn't make it on with you this year, but I uh, look forward to catching up with you soon. Congratulations, Perry, on the 100. Hi, this is Joseph Brazo from Wenatchee, Washington. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Uh I just remember one of my favorite episodes is when Perry was inter- interviewing that guy and they talked about bourbon and, and bits and things, and, and the other guy cursed a lot. Uh, thank you. I'll take my answer off air. Oh, Pear Bear, where do I start? This is Dustin Wicker. You know who I am. The old rogue sampler himself. A hundred episodes. Wow. Can't believe it, buddy. I'm so proud of you and happy for what you've done i remember the first episodes i was listening to and just thinking wow things have changed <laughs> sitting out here on the porch having a drink having a smoke you know how i am so i just wanted to say congratulations to getting to 100 me and misty are so proud of you for what you've done and everything and you know just crazy to think what the show has meant personally to me you know i mean look at us now i mean we literally or consider I consider you my friend. I consider you my brother. And I mean, it's just it's it's crazy all because of this show and bourbon, mainly bourbon. I mean, it's just it's I'm nothing but love, nothing but I'm so proud. I love the show. I love you and Lucy. Just uh, keep going with the show. You're doing so awesome. I love everything about the show from the the tit, tits and bits and just. I mean, the reviews, it's just, it's great stuff. So keep it up, buddy. Here's another 100, 200 more. Cheers. Bear Bear, it's Porter, a.k.a. ADHD Fishing, a.k.a. Mr. Steel Your Bourbon, a.k.a. I don't know. Anyway, Barry, congratulations on 100 episodes. Holy freaking crap, dude. What's up? It's a lot of episodes. Whew. I can't. That's a, that's a shit ton of episodes there, Pear Bear. Anyway, oh, man, you've uh, definitely helped me kill some hours on the old bus listening to Chad and Sarah and Dix and Deadman and Mary Neves and Papa Ritter, Sister Ritter, Perry Ritter. Anyway, you probably want to get rid of me right now, so I'm going to go ahead and go. I just wanted to pair share my thoughts on Pear Bear's 100th episode, and uh, congratulations, Mr. Perry, and uh, make it a good one. Hi, Perry. This is Monica. I just wanted to let you know that I still remember the first podcast I listened to of yours. It was the one of you and your dad hanging out and laughing so hard that I couldn't help but laugh with the two of you. And I've enjoyed you ever since. And I just think you're a fantastic person. And I can't believe it's your 100th show. That's incredible. So have a really good week. And I hope to see you again in the future very soon. 
Hey, Perry, it's Brian Brennecke. There's so many great memories over the past two years from the podcast. Um, you know, you've had awesome interviews. The interview with Freddie Johnson really stands out in my mind. You had great reviews, Patreon chats and lives. But the memory that really stands out for Tammy and I um, was the first live recording with Sarah, Peggy, and Andrea. Um, it was awesome to to meet everybody down there. And, you know, as wonderful and entertaining as the podcast has been over the past two years, we cherish the community that you fostered. Um, it's just been wonderful to meet you, your family, and all of the other great listeners that were able to make it to that event. We look forward to many more in the future. Uh, cheers to the first 100 episodes, and um, definitely looking forward to many, many more. Congrats. Thank you all again so much for sending in uh, all your, your calls. That was really something kind of special for me to to hear uh, as as they were rolling in some goofs and gags and everything in there, but also some really uh, sweet memories that you guys have provided to me. And, you know, I, I really have enjoyed, you know, this little retrospective of 100 episodes. But uh, let's drink something else, shall we? Yes. yes. This feels like a special pour. Yes, and every uh, time you pull that one off the shelf i'm like <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> oh kentucky owl confiscated signed by the man himself dixon deadman that was a crappy cork pop ah, matter. yeah hey do we want to uh we can make another announcement too while we're we're pouring this sharing this around sure if we're announcing things yeah let's do it uh moving forward we are going to be uh having our our very first full-time official sponsor of the show uh, which is Distilled Experiences, the, the company that I work with. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Distilled Experiences uh, it takes folks around to different uh, distilleries. Um, I am one of the tour guides uh, for them as well. Uh, so if you book an experience with us, uh, you will actually very likely have me, uh, which is kind of cool. And, you know, we get to hang out and we'll talk about bourbon and, and what makes it so much fun. Uh, but, uh, because of this partnership, uh, you are going to be, uh, receiving things like, uh, discount codes here in the near future. Uh, after the start of the year, we are going to be, uh, starting up a new aspect of the tours, which is actually going to be a Friday horse tour. Uh, so Fridays, we're going to have, uh, the horse tours Saturday will be bourbon and then Sunday will be a best of Kentucky kind of, kind of deal. Uh, where we do both of those uh, in, in one whole day. Uh, we do more than just that, of course. If you want to hire us for tastings or events, uh, that's part of the experience portion of, uh, of Distilled Experiences. There is also going to be really, really cool things uh, here in the coming future. Uh, we're going to be talking about doing barrel picks, uh, not just for the company itself, but also for different uh, uh, restaurants and stores, uh, things of that nature. Uh, so we will give you more information on that as that becomes available. And then we're expanding beyond just Kentucky tours. Uh, we're going to be moving on actually internationally as well, which is going to be really cool. Uh, more on that uh, as it approaches. But Distilled Experiences, again, you can find us everywhere on social media. Um, super happy to have the company as the first real full-time sponsor uh, of the podcast. It's super exciting um, for me and, and for everybody over there. My thanks to Nate uh, for wanting to jump on board with this. But uh, yeah, big things happening at the <laughs> at This Very Is cool. My Bourbon Podcast. Yeah. So yeah, uh, pouring a little bit of this Kentucky Owl confiscated bottle signed by Dixon Deadman himself. Tanner made a face. He did, again, and I was about to ask about it. I just, that's my analyzing face. <laughs> I'm sorry you haven't seen no, me no, in no, 40 like, episodes, yeah, but that's, that's just what that's I do. True. What was your thought on that? It's on very the nose? sweet. Yeah, I agree. I got a really specific note on it, and I like it. Yeah? Like vanilla bean ice cream and bread pudding. Mmm. Yeah. That's a good call. Yeah. I see that. That's a solid call. Bread pudding is exactly what I'm getting. I'm getting the... I, this is only, like because i'm associated with it but keeneland bread pudding they put a bourbon you shill huh you shill i know <laughs> <laughs> but they put a bourbon glaze on it mm. really good yeah no yeah, now i can't not smell a little bit of a uh like a donut kind of oh uh, like the cake, the cake yeah, donuts like, mm -hmm. yes yeah i could just get lost in this nose you know when this first came out i started seeing post after post about people thinking is this worth it you know, I don't know if I want to pay this much for a bottle of like proof down Kentucky Owl. No, it's totally worth so it. Good. Yeah. 
sorry, I laughed because when you said I could get lost in this nose, all I could think of was Double Dare. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Oh, wow. That. that was a, that's some that's nostalgia a throwback right there. Right there. Yeah, 100 episodes. You got to go back to way before any of this. <laughs> <was ever, laughs> before this podcast even, even existed. No. Yeah. Fun um, show, though. Great show. Shout out to Double Dare. Yeah. <laughs> Man, the palette is like a snickerdoodle. There's so much baked goodsiness on yeah. on this bourbon. This is the best one we've had so far, in my opinion. Ooh, that's my favorite. Now I kind of I kind of have to agree. With I really you. like that a lot. And that I mean, as much as I love 107 and uh, and uh, Elijah Craig 12 year, man, confiscated. Dick Dixon Dixon knows what what's uh, what's what when he's blending his bourbons. Tanner, would you make a candle out of this? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. This is the <laughs> this is the candliest candle uh, or candliest bourbon we've had tonight. I That's mean, a new term that you will get to use. I'm giving you that one. Candliest. candliest. I'm going to make the bold. It's one of, It's probably like the most candliest, which we're making <laughs> words out of. Yes. Um, that uh, double qualifier. I potentially had. Yeah, this smells amazing. I would can, buy this as a body wash. Can we get this like a little trophy with a little guy bowling on top of a most candliest? <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Dixon candliest next time we see him. <laughs> hey, just want to let you know you won this. Why yeah. is there a giraffe nice. on this trophy? <laughs> we should all sign it like he signed the bottle too. It's like the exact same Thanks, thing. Thanks, uh, Dixon. Your we didn't have the money to get the joke. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have the the money to get the like big trophy. So you, you got the like the little league makeshift trophy. one that we didn't get to pick. You get a oh, medal. We could, that was yeah. about to say we could just go real cheap and get him a medal for yeah. it too. Yeah. No, th- this is one of those that I like to break out for special occasions. Um, I feel like it is. You know, and I talked about Dixon with this as well. It's meant to be shared. You know, it it, it should. That's why my <laughs> my antique collection bottles go down so quickly. <laughs> it's like everybody try this. I want you to try this. See how good it is. <laughs> like you know, I just get excited about that that community aspect of it. And like this is this is really no different for me. Um, it totally doesn't drink like it's ninety six point four proof. Oh no, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> Tanner, I feel like you're you're I'm uh, a very big fan of this. Yeah, I feel like your uh, your like radar of understanding what proofs are is a little off. It right is now, a little bit. Been, yeah. yeah. Hey, there's actually a little bit of tobacco on the on the finish too, like cigar tobacco that I really like. I might have to try this with a cigar sometime soon. Anyway. Confiscated. <laughs> I like that it spoke it's good. To you us. should get it. You like that it's what? Spoke to us there for a second. When you held it up to the mic, it was like doom doom doom. <laughs> It had, a little, had a little swash. It's like, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, do you want to pour something else before we get into it? Are we going too fast, Tanner? I'm cool with that. No, oh, I'm good. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> I mean, we could like kill this. I don't know oh, if we'll be able to get... Oh, you want to kill the get... Weller 12? Yeah, let's kill it. Yeah. We'll be able to get all four. <laughs> let's kill it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Put it on the chopping block. Now, we'll go for the uh, the Glen Cairns on this one. Good, because I'm not done with this confiscated yet. I yeah, I'm not time. either. I'm savoring it. My boy Glenn. <laughs> and his wife Karen. Yep. There's a throw. There's a throwback. A if we've ever throwback. had one. Now Tanner, have you had Weller Twelve Year before? Yes. Yeah. Did we review it with him? I feel like I did it on the show, but maybe not. Okay. I think we did. Maybe we did. If I'm remembering correctly, you got, I, you got a little. Left. No, no, we did review it with him. We reviewed it with uh, with Matt in Knoxville. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. So maybe Woo. not then. I don't know if you have. I know I've had Weller. I just don't know if I've had Weller 12. That smells a lot oakier than I remember Weller 12 smelling. You smell a lot oakier than I remember. <laughs> what did you say? I said you smell a lot oakier than I remember. <laughs> Listen, I don't bring much Been knowledge. Re- I got to try to... <laughs> I gotta try to bring the comedy, but it doesn't work, so I'm just here. I, just, I missed it because you were so off mic the first That's time. That's true, you said I was. It, I was leaning forward like... for the glass. <laughs> no, I usually get like baking spices on Weller 12, but it's like an oak bomb this time. <laughs> it's still prevalent, though. Words are funny, I man. still am getting some of the sweet notes. I have to kind of search for them, kind of. Take a deep dive yeah. into it. I'll be interested to see what the palette is on this. I haven't had this in about a year. Wow. It's been a while. I get maple on this, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I can, oh, I can that. see that. Like maple syrup totally or just... Yeah, 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 yeah. Maple syrup. Or like specifically sap. Yeah, let me tell you about the way a maple tree <laughs> smells. No, maple syrup. That's the only, <laughs> only maple scent I know. 
Swan? Yeah, you look like you're about I to think, deliver a speech. I think I like the Weller 12 better than the 107. I think I've had 107 picks that are way better than this. Yeah. But just the standard offering, at least these two specific bottles, I think I'd take your Weller 12 over it. I would oh, definitely agree man. on that. That's fantastic. The back end of the palate into the finish is just phenomenal. Mm. Oh. It's like honey. Mm-hmm. It's really good. And we, you haven't been on, but we've talked about like kind of on the back of the palate... Like the honey kind of drip that yeah. it kind of feels. Yeah. That's, that's exactly is. what I'm getting. Yep. I remember the bourbon that he used to describe that first, and it's so accurate. I had some of it the other day. Is the kitchen table, Booker's. Yes. That stuff's great. Where is that? We should have brought that on. That was a good one know. from last year. <laughs> no clue. It's in my house. So I, I just want to, um, I didn't want to harp on it too much because, you know, there's only so much we can say about it, uh, just in terms of like sticking w- w- with with something that you've started. But um, it it really has shown me, you know, by by doing a hundred episodes, how important this is. Um, you know, ju- it, it, even if it's just for me, you know, I get to do something that I love and and share experiences with with really good friends, and I'm making new friends all the time. And I mean, I've I've always. I've been saying, you know, I, I think I've made more friends, like good friends over the past two years than I have in my entire life. Mm. Like there, there have just been such great connections that the podcast has allowed me to have. And, you know, I'm just, I'm very thankful that not only have those come about, but also that you, the listeners, have been so responsive to this and and shown me that it's there. There's a reason why we have gotten to 100 episodes. Um, I I love hearing the feedback. I mean, I hear I hear weekly feedback from listeners. That's so cool. There aren't a lot of podcasts that get that. Yeah, you know? it's super important. But you know, I I, I just want to say that you know, and it sounds very cliched, <laughs> but we wouldn't have gotten to 100 episodes without the listeners. So thank you all so much uh, for, for hooking on to this show. Um, I think we still got quite a few more <laughs> in the tank uh, as far as, you know, episodes go, but uh, e- episode one feels like forever ago. It really does. I mean, l- literally two years ago yeah. when we first recorded it. And, I mean, I, I, I actually went back and listened to a little bit of it the other day. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even talk the same way. Oh, yeah. Like, Isn't it strange? My, my entire like, vocal presentation has totally changed from episode one. And it's not just on the podcast. I mean, like, in my everyday life, yeah. I speak <laughs> differently. Yeah. And I just, I, I love that I, I kind of have this little time piece that I can go back and look at and see, you know, what it was like on the first 20 episodes. I mean, my, my dad was on episode three. We were talking about how, how much we love Maker's Mark. How often do we drink <laughs> Maker's Mark now? Right. It's been a while. It's been a while. I mean, I had it last night, but, you know, that was just <laughs> kind of a... It's been a while. But, I mean, but, I mean last like, night. But, but it, it was out of necessity, you know, just because it was on the sure, bar. Yeah, there yeah. was, you know, that, that was the bourbon that was on the bar. And so that's what I went for. But, like... Otherwise, I mean, I don't keep it stocked. No. You know? <laughs> if it's like private select or like something that I've been given or something like At that. Keeneland, the Keeneland yeah, private select. It's actually select. sitting down there, I think. Oh, yeah. No. That one's <laughs> long gone. Really? <laughs> yeah, I drink it all. <laughs> Golly, man. That's impressive. I love that, though. Mine, I still have a little bit left. Do you? Just a little bit. I'm like saving it. It's really good. It is. Perry, I think, too, I think you deserve to be celebrated because... Oh, I know that as the the one who abandoned ship. Uh, <laughs> no, but like seriously, I know how hard it is to edit audio files and stuff uh, in different different capacities than this. But I know like that's a lot of work, and of course, like all the planning you're doing and stuff. So I think you deserve a pat on the back too. I appreciate that. Man. So yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, yeah I mean, we show up every yeah, week and talking to a mic and drink, and sometimes I'll bring bourbon, but that's like the extent of my my help. So I mean, I just. <laughs> talking to a mic bourbon. and it just poof, poof ta-da <laughs> podcast it yeah. comes out every wednesday that happened it's it's wild uh 
But I, yeah, it's it's great, man. I mean, honestly, it it's not always the easiest thing in the world. I mean, that's why it, you know the you know P- Patreon is a really important part to the show. I mean, I, I'm not gonna make any bones about it. Um, yes, there is a lot of time that goes into the creation of the show, and you know it, it by by having something that allows me to take that time away and really focus on you know making the show as good as it can be you know that that is a huge blessing to me and so yeah e- editing takes a while <laughs> yeah it does it's yeah. it, it takes it if you've takes never a, done it before do it one time and you'll realize it takes a hot minute it's a and lot. like i i have i've put a lot more effort into editing as the show's gone along yeah i mean like probably the first 30 or 40 episodes what you hear is basically what was recorded right but now i mean i you know if, if there's an hour and a half episode that usually takes me about two or three hours yeah to edit i mean that's just <laughs> that's yeah, just part yeah. of it general rule of thumb so, is you just double whatever the yeah uh, the final product is yeah so um i i i appreciate that very very much and you know i i I don't know what else to say. Yeah, it's I mean, yeah. Thank, thank you. I mean, honestly, it's impressive how long that we've we've been doing this, and how long you've been doing it, and just like communication between people, and the, like the interviews you've done with master distillers, thank stuff you. like that. I mean, that's a, that's a lot. Yeah, and as long as we're throwing out things, I'll go ahead and throw out another one because when I did the first episode, I was terrified. Yeah, mm-hmm. I went over to Kurt's apartment. We're sitting on the couch, and I'm like shaking and i'm like just need a couple pours and i'll be good you'll loosen up a little (laughs) bit it's great and you know honestly i stayed kind of a little scared of getting on the mic at all and then we did the live event and i got to meet everybody that listens to it and i'm like what on earth am i terrified of this is great all All these people people are yeah fantastic (laughs) and ever since then i've been able to you know do i did a one-on-one episode with you which i was nervous about and i mean just going back to your november thing the anxiety depression i've definitely seen myself lose quite a bit of that just doing the podcast over you know 60 episodes or so and you know that's that's great because it's not only impacted how i talk on the mic but also how i talk in person yeah. and my health so it's been great okay i'm definitely gonna have to try not to cry i'm sorry <laughs> but give us that image juice Give us that sweet, sweet images. <laughs> no, it, it's honestly, I think my my favorite part of the past two years has been the relationships that have been built. Really, really, and truly, I mean, the the podcast, of course, has been a highlight every single week, but the the connections that we've made and the the way that things have grown. I mean, it's just it's just amazing i don't know i don't know any other way to put it and you know really thank you all for for being a part of this and um yeah that's all i can really say about it also i'm getting like a strawberry shortcake (laughs) i actually was just thinking on the palate i was just thinking that on the weller 12 (laughs) yeah okay coming back thank you for getting me out of that hole hey you're good uh (laughs) But I'm serious though. The whole time we were talking, I was like, "Man, this is, there's a strawberry so note sweet. on it," but I couldn't specifically get to where it was, mm-hmm. and it was strawberry shortcake. Anyone else? No, no, I ab- I absolutely. Have I drank that. all mine. Yeah, it was I did so too. good. <laughs> oh, I, okay. yeah, I, I, I went well. Along. Curtis did have a little bit more than I we had, did. Yeah, so, true. So you kept looking for notes, and I'm like, I'm just gonna take my fourth sip real quick. Let's just, <laughs> let's just down this real shoot fast. This back. The notes have been sung. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just um. You know, the rest of the episode, I figure we just kind of hang out and chat yeah. a little bit and, and drink, drink some, bourbon. some bourbon. and Cool. Can know, we just like yeah. pick something that we want to tr- we have Absolutely. had before? I want something that's not bourbon. Okay. Can I try the Nika again? Heck yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I want to try that again. All right. Also, first bottle of Weller 12. Done? Done. That was very good. Thank you. It's a bittersweet moment, isn't it? Also, thank it you for because I letting me try everything. Because yeah, I, won't you're welcome. Ever, I won't ever find it again, probably. I got another one home. I mean, will you let me buy it? I've got it up for trade for one thing right now, and if that doesn't come through, sure. Sweet. 
So Swan wanted to try the Nika from the barrel, uh, which was last year's Whiskey Advocates Whiskey of the Year. Um, why did you choose this one, Swan? I have actually been considering getting, uh, and this is, goes back to Bourbon on the Banks, man. I think my favorite thing at Bourbon on the Banks was legitimately the Kings County peated bourbon. Interesting. Yeah, which like is a little so, bit of the Pete, huh? Yeah, it was so strange. Uh, Not Pete the guy, just Pete. Well, I, maybe Pete the guy. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Pete's a nice guy. Yeah. He seemed great on the office, but uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I like it. Yeah, but I, I well don't know. done. <laughs> I like the peated bourbon, and then I went and tried scotch. I'm like, nope, this still ain't it. I can't do it. So this is kind of, again, one of those middle ground bourbons. So I I just thought it'd be interesting to go back and try it again. So I want you to try this as well. This is um, Tattersall Single Malt Whiskey. Um, This is from Justin Sutherland, who was on uh, Top Chef. Hey, I listened Um, to this episode. (laughs) Did you? Yeah, that's the one with your dad again. Because you're talking about Oh, yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I actually had him on... The bourbon on the oh, cool. uh, bourbon and beyond that. episode, That's awesome too. Yeah, oh the three hour extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I broke it up into two episodes. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but I do want you to try that uh, after this because okay. I, I I'm curious to know if it's the the malt that you're. I think it's honestly it's not the malt, but just the smokiness to it because the Kings County has a funny way of really hitting those bourbon notes home, but then just adding something new to the finish. Which I like, because there's only one other American malt that I've tried with peat in it. It was the uh, Westland, I believe. It's some I yeah. don't know that at all. Yeah, I think it was Westland peated malt. Uh, but it it was okay, but it wasn't my favorite. But definitely with the ones that have that kind of high corn mash bill mixed with the peat, it was interesting, and I liked it. And I totally forgot about this, Nika. Yeah. I'm glad you br- brought it up and that we're trying it again, because I remember enjoying it so much. It's a great bottle. I, I think, honestly, my favorite thing about bourbon on the banks in general or just some of these other events is trying these kind of niche, smaller distilleries. Because there was two things in particular that I, I really learned from doing one of those. It's the companies that are doing some of these younger malted barley, malted wheat, malted different grains are phenomenal, even at a young age. And then on top of it, peat's not terrifying. But it's not necessarily something I seek out unless it has a bourbon front yeah. to it. And I think that's what this does so well, uh, it being from the barrel. Uh, I mean, you get that peatiness, but you also get those notes of your bourbon, you know, spice, your bourbon, uh, oak, and smoke. Mm-hmm. I need to actually look up what the mash bill is on this because I, quite frankly, have no idea. That is incredibly different from what we just drank. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. And just to give a little background of what this is. Wow. Perry or, or Swan. Yeah, this is what? a Japanese whiskey. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, I think, and I, I could be very, very wrong. Um, okay, so it's the, the Nika Whiskey Distilling Company from Japan, uh, imported by Anchor Distilling Company in San Francisco. No idea. Um, but... It's uh, it's fifty one point four percent. So what is that? One hundred and two point eight yep. proof. Um, so nothing really like out of this world. Um, but I, I, but something you don't see very often from a Japanese whiskey. Yeah. No, most of the time, any scotch and stuff like that, it rarely goes over ninety. Exactly. Yeah, a lot of them like to sit at that eighty to ninety range. Um, and then when they do offer it, it is in big, bold letters. You see a cash strength right on the front. I mean, they're upfront about it. And then you got Elijah Craig that's like, you know, I'm going to put a small little black label down <laughs> yeah. at the bottom. It's not that big of a difference. It's just, you know, 30, yeah. 40 proof points higher than the normal. Literally, <laughs> literally the color difference is the yeah. only thing. We'll put a small little neck tag on it. You'll be fine. Yeah. You'll be all right. So this shows oh, how shit, much. 130? <laughs> this shows how much I know. Oh, man, that's good. Um. This is not a, a single malt expression. It's a blend of Japanese malt whiskey and grain whiskey, uh, which has been married in oak casks, um, which is where the name comes from, uh, uh, from the barrel, right? It's from the blending barrel, not the maturing barrel. So that's funny because you said grain whiskey. So that leads me to believe that it's got some corn ne- rye, neutral grain, something. Some, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which could be the reason I like it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, I don't know. I enjoy it. This level of Pete's nice. I tried... Goodness gracious. I told somebody I was interested in trying it, and they're like, here, here's a little sample of Octomore. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Here's the thing. I don't know if this is peated. I don't know if this is peat. But it's got like a smokiness to it that right. I, I like. But I think peat... And, and I'm, I'm not a scotch expert by any means, and I'll have to defer to my friends who drink scotch, but I think that, that peat is the the earthiness of it yeah but the smokiness may be a byproduct of it but i don't think that it's so from the same thing from what I, I i know from just looking up a few things and watching the whiskey vault it seems like basically what they do is they have a large warehouse with uh some malted grain in it and then they basically use it as a ginormous smoker and the instead of using charcoal or some sort of mesquite like we do with barbecue and stuff, they they use that peat, which is literally just like condensed moss and earth, and then it smokes yeah. into the malted stuff. So, and it's usually kind of a small percentage of it, but they they do measure it by like peat per million or something weird like that. Ah, uh, ppm. Huh. Yeah, that. Yeah, it's uh, something. Yes, strange. of course. But, ppm. Love when songs have a high ppm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I don't fun. know. It's fun. It's fun to try. I kind of want to mix something with it to see if having a more bourbon forward something with some smoke in it would be interesting. When you say mix, yeah. you mean like blend it with, yeah. with something else? Yeah. I wonder. I, I wonder what would be confiscated. You could do confiscated with the, do it from the barrel. Oh wow! All right, you, you did go. In. I, I, I was. That. I do too. But I was gonna say, I wonder if a a, a weeded bourbon would actually give that uh, a kind of room. To breathe a little bit more. Yeah. Because, and th- this is something that we've been talking about recently. When you're drinking a weeded bourbon and and you taste more sweetness, what you're tasting is not the addition of wheat to the product. What you're tasting is the absence of rye. Mm. And so where rye is that flavor agent that makes it spicier. Is this a yes or or no? He said nothing in handing handing the glass to Perry. But I just way. want I want Perry's opinion. He on said this. nothing. Okay, okay so no the, face. I watched for a reaction, and there was nothing. <laughs> Good the nose thing. is very much like a single malt whiskey. Yeah, this is the no reaction drink. Oh, the yeah. palate's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad at all. It's nutty. <laughs> <laughs> you all hid that for so long. <laughs> I, I just wanted to that, experience. It's so oh, weird. It's nutty. It's yeah, nutty. Try really. It. It's really strange. It kind of like really embodies the confiscated, and you really don't get a ton of the Nika, but then the finish hits, and it's like, hey, I'm still here. And it kind of reminds you a little bit. This would confuse me so much in a blind tasting. <laughs> yeah. I would have no idea how to even like. Perry, I'm already confused in a blind tasting. I don't need this. <laughs> you don't think. That's, you because, don't think... that's because you're blind. <laughs> yeah. You don't think it's. Uh... It loses it? You don't think it gets lost in the It definitely loses a lot of the, the Nika, but there is just a little bit of smoke. I'd you'd probably have to blend it more so yeah. le- like then not necessarily fifty eight fifty. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't even recreate that. I don't know what I just did, but it's okay. <laughs> it's it, good. I mean, yeah, no, it, not it, bad. Just kind of from, you know, eyeballing it, it really did look like it was a one to one blend. Yeah. Yeah. So I would be interested, and this is kind of <laughs> me postulating what it very well could be. Um, but so you're taking one product that is basically, for lack of a better phrase, double oaked, mm-hmm. you know, double cast, casked, casked. Um, and then that, so that's the Nika, mm-hmm. but all Kentucky Owl products as well are put back in oak barrels. So taking two double barreled products blending them together what would happen if you put it in another barrel <laughs> after that i mean like what what would that be like bourbon squared i don't know <laughs> i got me Bur- bourbon cubed yeah bourbon yeah, cubed, cubed squared. <laughs> i don't know anyway i just think that would be an interesting little experiment to kind of go through bourbon to the fourth power let's do it <laughs> <laughs> This tastes like, and I mean this in the most complimentary way, this tastes like a campfire, but in like a, you know how like hot dogs roasted on a campfire taste mm. good? Mm-hmm. It's like that. 
Like okay. if you somehow roasted a uh, bird no, I on totally, a campfire, I totally get it's that. that. All right. So I totally get like the the mossiness of it. I totally get it. Like, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. It's like you drop the hot dog on the grass. On grass <laughs> yeah. and then it's, cooked it and it's amazing. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. never it off at all. Do what? You didn't clean it off at all. No. Like you just threw it right on the fire. Flavor. Yeah. No, Perry, you camping. camping. You don't clean that. You just toss it in. You're good to go. The yeah. alcohol will kill it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. What's As next? us all. I don't Wait, know. So, are you pouring alcohol in your hot dog? <laughs> Maybe. Have you never had a bourbon soaked hot dog? God, that sounds so gross. <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to see one? <laughs> <laughs> Give me about 10 seconds. Because I brought one in a jar. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for cleaning up my very You're dirty You're very jar. welcome. <laughs> Have you ever seen a grown man naked? (laughs) You like gladiator movies? (laughs) Well, what I was going to say was that Swan picked one to try. Do you want to pick one as well? Uh, Not that I was trying to get to that, but I was trying to get to that. Um, (laughs) Since you asked. (laughs) Pulls out a notepad. (laughs) Um, I've been taking notes on every So here's an interesting thing that I'm not sure that you'll have. Okay. Do you have WLW from 2017? Or from Mari, the first time we tried it? No. Out of it. But I do have last year's. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of last year's. <laughs> do you want to try it again? <laughs> Is it better? Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. opened up quite a bit. You all are getting me very bibbed, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to go with that one, though. Okay. If well, I'm getting an option. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, everything is open. I've had C9. I, I was going to say C918, but... Oh, do you want to do an impromptu review of C nine one eight? No, of C one C nine one nine. I mean, if we if may we as well want to, yeah, okay, sure. So, um, I didn't even think this was going to turn into a review, but uh, this is a, a sample of Elijah Craig Barrel Proof C nine one nine, the last release from Elijah Craig Barrel Proof for twenty nineteen. Twelve years old, one hundred and thirty six point eight proof. Jesus. And C9, <laughs> C918 was all three of that ours. Was, well, no, yours was Mine was stag. the stag. The stag was but really Swan good. and I had C918. Mine was second, though. Yeah. I did actually bring down the uh, the B517 uh, from 2017. I like the C from that. Or, yeah, the C from that. You like better. the C from 2017 better. See, mm-hmm. the, the B is still my favorite. I thought the C was a little too hot. Um, so... Yeah, I'm excited for this. Yeah. I didn't think we were going to do a review with this episode. I didn't but either. Hey, <laughs> here here we are. Thank I you. was going to ask you if I could try this after we <laughs> stopped recording. No, but... we're we're doing a full on full on review. Hold on, let me get rid of my Nika. Yeah, I'm going to get a just a bit more. Yes. Swan has gone full Rocky at the top of the. <laughs> yeah, at <laughs> the top of the stairs. I don't think I've his, ever seen Swan do that in the before. Air. All right, so here's a little secret. I walk downtown all the time, and there's one little staircase right there next to the hotel. <laughs> and I, the- I run up that thing, and every time I'm like, no one can see me. I stick my hand straight up in the air, and I'm just like, heck yes, I did it. Swan, you're still my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Stick what? my wings up in the air. It's all good. <laughs> Your wings. Oh, yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, also, I need to point out that this was provided to us by the Heaven Hill Distillery for free. So, thank you to Heaven Hill. Thanks, yes. Heaven Hill, um, for, for providing this. I this. love that Heaven Hill's doing this now. It's fantastic because it's just, they're, they've been my favorite distillery for a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I sometimes fight with them and Jim Beam on who's my favorite, Ooh. but if you're looking at just Heaven their entire Hill. product line, Heaven Hill's got it. Yeah. And the announcement of Larceny Barrel Proof this week just solidified oh, yeah, that. Oh, we haven't even talked about that yet. Just solidified that like no other. Because they've already had two to three releases of Barrel Proof that have been very, very limited. But the So the, the Barrel Proof that they've been putting out mm. is a single barrel. Yes. This is batched. Yeah. So that it's going to be in the same vein as Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. And you sent, <laughs> you sent me and Chad <laughs> the funniest comment in the world <laughs> from somebody um so for anybody who doesn't know i'm sorry heaven hill owns both larceny and elijah craig um and when <laughs> larceny barrel proof was announced somebody commented on an instagram post and said kind of feels like they're ripping off elijah craig barrel proof <laughs> and the elijah craig instagram account commented and said 
<laughs> we'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to that marketing team. Oh, it's so good, man. <laughs> you have to know somebody immediately put that out, and they're just like, everyone, look at this. And they're like, just clapped for him. Like, yeah. go you, man. Yeah, he gets to go home early that bit. day. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You can take the rest of the day off, Steve. You did well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, shout out to Steve. <laughs> yeah. Woo, that's a lot of spice on that nose. It is. There's a, look. I thought I was a baby. No, there's a crazy amount of alcohol. Yeah. You know, really? I enjoy that, actually. We... I singed my nose hairs a little We've bit. We've talked about this before throughout the podcast. I don't get... You have an iron nose. I, re- I really don't get the ethanol. I mean, I, obviously it's higher proof and I know that. But I'm getting more of those those sweeter baked good notes with yeah. the uh, you know smokiness and oak char, like the char of the oh, barrel. Okay, now that I've kind of reset my nose... Yeah, I, I'm definitely seeing that. And this is the highest proof one they've put out in like two years, two three years, something like that, because it comes in at one thirty six point eight, right? Well, I, I, I think the the A one nineteen was like one thirty three. Yeah, it's up there, but this one's still, you know, it's got a little extra. Proof oh, I mean, top. yeah, this is the closest they've gotten to to um like hazmat territory. To hazmat. In a while. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, I mean, really since what like 2013, 2014? Yeah, because they did like they did a one forty plus release. I think they've had a one thirty nine point four and a one thirty six, and those are kind of the high high points for this. So this is definitely getting up there in their range. Swan, I'm gonna echo your arms right up in the air. I mean, <laughs> now that I've really kind of taken the time to to dive into the nose, this, this is, is this is one of those that like you've seen people blow into the Glen Karen and then take a sniff after. That this is why, because it's the oh. ethanol is heavy until you do something like that and kind of clear it out a little bit. Have you tried it yet? No. Sorry. One more note on the nose. It smells like this is very specific. The top crust of an apple pie where they put like grain, like the heavy sugar on it. That's what I'm smelling. That got a little burnt. Yes, yeah. it's like a little caramelized, but it's great. This is the finish. Phenomenal. I mean, the palate, too, but the finish. I want a second sip, though, because this is very ethanol-heavy on the tongue for me. And I yeah, think that'll go away after the first sip. I'm hoping. It's a little stingy. Mm-hmm. To put it in baby bourbon terms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back for a reason. <laughs> I appeal to the common man. <laughs> the layman's bourbon drink. Oh, you know what we'll do from now on is a, a, a baby bourbon boy minute. With Tanner? Yes. Where he just records. Yeah, call in. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah exactly. just a call in. <laughs> so dumb. He doesn't even try it. He's just like, yeah, I'm just like, if it's high on ethanol, it means it stings real bad. It's like a bee hit your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> the baby bourbon boy minute. Yeah, that finish is phenomenal. Yeah. That's the just best part. It keeps going. Yeah, that's the best part. It's the warming effect, that Kentucky hug. I think I like C918 better. I, I will this. agree. I think this is just a tad too hot. This is hot. Yeah, but it is very, very good. This is so much flavor. And it's weird because we just tried that Elijah Craig 12-year. This is also 12-year from oh, Elijah Craig. Moly. That This is not that ramped up. This is a whole new thing. This coats my mouth in a way that C918 didn't. I'll give you that. It is very, very oily. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's a great word. Yeah, but it is... I don't know. I'm I'm missing some of the extra like sweetness punch. This, oh, it's very dark. Yeah, this is very very dark. This is getting in stag territory. I think so too. I that's kind of what I was thinking is that it it's very much like a high proof stag. Yeah, which is great because this year's stag is the lowest proof I think it's ever been. Yeah. Uh. uh spoilers as well. Uh. In a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing a review of. All of the 2019 Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. Cue the Rocky product. So yeah, oh for sure. Uh, so uh, that we'll, we'll get to that in a couple weeks, but just to put that on your all's radar. I like this. Th- this is really good. Um, this <laughs> yeah, look. This is not an everyday thing. <laughs> don't don't pretend like you can have this to end your night. I mean, oh, this no, no. You know what this actually reminds me of is not exactly Daddy Stag, but more Stag Junior. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, because it, it does feel a little bit less refined. 
you know, than than some of the some of these products have if that for a while. Ethanol punch that it has went away a little bit. I think it'd be good. I think it would be more in the line with like Stag Senior instead of Junior. But this is phenomenal. And especially at the price point, I mean, you're going to start seeing this anywhere between 60 to $70 in MSR, MSRP. That's not bad. Yeah, no, that's not bad at all. I mean, mm-hmm. this is this is something I would easily pick up. And I'm, again, just like the C918, I picked up a case and a half of C918. I have one bottle left. I mean, it is it is hard to stay away from this. And you talked about not being able to end your night with this. You could end your night with this every night because it would it's strong enough to end your night. <laughs> uh, but well, it's, definitely. <laughs> it's definitely uh, something I would say for special occasions. And if you're looking, since it's got those stag notes, if you're searching for Buffalo Trace and you come up short and you see one of these on the shelf, you just you found something just as good, if not better. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of a testament to how consistently good Elijah Creek Barrel Proof has been. Mm-hmm. And not to say that the the antique collection hasn't been consistently good, but it it is so hard for me at times to justify the amount of money, a hundred dollars plus for a bottle of the antique collection. If you're lucky, if you're if you're lucky, right? When something like this exists at sixty five dollars a bottle, I mean it, it's again maybe not as refined as a bottle of George T. Stag, but. I still think that this offers so much and brings so much to the table with a barrel proof bourbon that it's, it's highly drinkable. The proof on it is fantastic. (laughs) I mean, I I think that that barrel proof status really does kind of push it into the, you know, the next realm, but there, there's just something so I, I think easily accessible about this being a barrel proof bourbon that a lot of barrel proofs don't have. A lot of them just smack you in the face. Yeah, mm-hmm. this that's one, all they say. Yeah. <laughs> this one does have, you know, a lot to it, but, you know, I, I kind of liken this to Booker's. Yeah. If we're talking accessible barrel proofs. So. Yeah, and, and this is, Elijah Craig was kind of my intro into really, really high barrel proof bourbons where it didn't seem like the proof was a redeeming quality. Like, it's definitely a cohesive, this is a wonderful bourbon, and at this proof, it's just even better. Because there's so many barrel proofs that I've had where the only thing I can say is, I like the proof. <laughs> right? You know, and that's not necessarily something you can say with this because I like the flavor profile. I like the extended finish. I like the... I do like the proof, but it, that's not the only thing I've got to say about it. So yeah. kudos to them, man. This is just a solid and a great addition to their next lineup. Yeah, and it gets me excited for what the Larceny Barrel Proof is going to be like, too, oh, yes. come next year. And um, I, I'm excited for when we can do each each release side by side. So, you know, we'll probably have three episodes a year that's like Larceny Barrel Proof and the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof from that month Mm -hmm. you know so i i'm just really really looking forward to everything that's coming from from heaven hill next year swan and i both added a little bit of water to ours did i see did you add water no i I see that okay no you just went for it weirdly enough though this is teetering between my least favorite and my second favorite and i don't know why huh i explain i really enjoy how bold it is but i don't think i could drink it for a prolonged experience if that makes sense well, I don't think it's meant to be. Sure, but I think like but one drink of it, I really, really enjoy. Oddly enough for me, which is I'm never like the one to lean toward proof, it's really enjoyable for a one drink experience, if that makes sense. Do you, do you mean like one sip? No, like one drink, like not a nightcap, but just like a, I'm going to have one drink. This is so bold, oh, it's going to okay. service me for the rest of the night. This oh, is okay. ideal for a one ounce pork bar. Yes, oh, 100%. exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. That was that. more eloquent than I could be. Yeah, <laughs> well said. Yeah, like we said, Tanner's had no bourbon for the past six months. That's so. true. But I mean, <laughs> honestly, I'm impressed because like I came in my first episode and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I brought stuff. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and he's taking a break for you know so long, and he comes back and actually gets tasting notes. I'm surprised because no, I was pretty much just like. Well, let me see what Perry says, and I'm going to echo that. <laughs> Changed up a little bit, but I'll try. Take the bourbon out of the guy, but you can't take the guy out of the bourbon. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I like it with water. 
I actually like it a lot better with water. Yeah, me too. It's it really takes away some of that ethanol heavy stuff. This is great. I I'd, I'd love to see what happens when it opens. I up. will say though, okay, you know maybe I don't. <laughs> too bad like we it. can't let it open up. <laughs> <laughs> let me say though, um, I actually might not like it as much with water. I think that there are some more of the sweeter notes that come to the front, but there's actually a little bit of a bitterness that's showing up too that I'm not. I'm a sucker for really really dark chocolate. Same. Oh. So like some of that bitterness bitter. is totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Like if you get some of those 72 or above percent dark chocolate, yes. <laughs> I'm with so, you 100%. Yeah, so this is perfect for me. I I'm, can see I'm that. fine with that. But I can see what you say or what you're saying about it though. It definitely does have some bitterness. Uh but I could make it where it's some people's favorite, some people's, you know, kind of least favorite batch from this year. Yeah, you don't show it to like a non-bourbon drinker, I don't think. But at the same point, like if someone's really into bourbon, I think it's going to be interesting to everyone. It's such an interesting bourbon. If yeah. you gave this to a non-bourbon drinker, they would be like, "What is wrong with yeah, you?" Yeah, why do you drink this? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but that's not a an indictment of the bourbon as much of it's just a very refined bourbon, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You have to kind of know what you're drinking at that point. Yes. Yeah, if you gave this to a non-bourbon drinker, they'd be like, ah, oh, I get it. Bourbon is pain. Like, yeah, it's bourbon just, is pain. Better get me really <laughs> drunk. You have to suffer yeah. for your art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The whole name of the game is just taking a sip and not acting like it just painfully like hurt you. I mean, it's... Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but it's it's definitely... This is really good. C918, definitely my favorite, but C1, C919, still good. I feel like it's C918, but ramped up like higher proof. I think so, too. And yeah. Booker's has kind of had an off year for me. The first two batches I was eh on. Third one was pretty good. I got good to try stuff, that the man. other day. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. They have been solid all three batches this year. Yeah. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof? Yes. Yeah, for sure. Very solid. Very sure. different profiles on all of them. I'm extremely impressed on that, especially for a batch product, but it's all been solid this year. Yeah. So we do have a review system on the show of nose palette finish and price. This is the first time in a while that we've really kind of put a bourbon through the ringer uh, in terms of the actual uh, four category system. Uh, each category is out of five. We total everything up for a score out of 20. Tanner, you used to go first uh, on these, on these reviews. What a, so do you, do you want to go first ago. again sure, for old time's not? sake? Sure. Uh, <laughs> all right. Nose. It's out of five. Yeah. Yes. It's an interesting one, right? Because like, from a, if you just take a sniff of it and you don't know to like let the ethanol burn down, it's going to be very aggressive. And we all kind of experienced that as you heard. But I think after that, it's delightful. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give it a four. Um, palette, it's not going to be everybody's bourbon. I'm just going to tell it's it's going to be very decisive or decisive and divisive. Um, it's going to be polarizing. And so I'm going to give it a, Three on palette finish, I love. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a five on finish. I think wow. the finish is amazing. Uh, and the the final one is price. How much price is this? Sixty five ish. I think that's totally fine. I think this is, I think this is a bourbon you keep in your you know in your war chest, if you will, for. Exactly. Uh, that was a great sound. Yeah, that was really was good. Did you know that was going to sound that good? No, I didn't. <laughs> sounded awesome. That was great. I don't know if I'll ever be able to repeat that either. No, yeah, that was fantastic. Uh, but no, I think it's if you have friends like these who are very good into uh, very big into bourbon, I think it's something you bring out. It's going to be interesting. It's going to create a conversation. So for that, I think the price is totally good. I'm going to give it the price of four too. Um, I'm really high on this because it's so bold. I understand that that may detract for a lot of people and i'm normally i think the kind of person for that for whom that would detract but for some reason i'm, I'm really into this well i think that it kind of speaks volumes to you know the the fact that you're a, a, clearly not a, a normal bourbon drinker but sure. you're you know coming into this going this is really good i would definitely pay this kind of money yeah 100 yeah. so i think that's a, a really solid point of view mm. to come through swan I gave the nose a 3.5. I think it's actually the weakest point out of this bourbon. Really? Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. So I gave it a... 3.5 is not a bad score No, it's either. not. That's, so... again, weakest point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, honestly, the only reason I give it a, a 3.5 is just because of the ethanol. I mean, the ethanol is extremely heavy in it. We did have it in Glencairn, so that's kind of supposed to 
not necessarily resolve it, but kind of put a muzzle on that aggressiveness, and it just didn't. Uh, but, you know, you blow in the Glen Cairn, let it sit for a little bit, add some water. It definitely brings it down to an extremely palatable level of uh, ethanol, and it's it's nice. Uh, it's But it's kind of hard to pinpoint notes. It's a very cohesive experience. Uh, and then when you get mm. to the palate, you can definitely pick out some stuff. But I had trouble with it. But I like it. It's good. Yeah. I definitely make a candle out of it. I've been mm-hmm. using that for so long. To hear him say it is like, I'm fanboying a little bit. Well, I, yeah. saw, I saw that too. You got like really excited when yeah. you said that. And I, I was did. like, the I candle. this is a bourbon. moment. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. The bourbon candle boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's me. The Start candle company. <laughs> Called Candlius. So you did, did you just give the rest of your... No, 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 I just did 3.5 for the nose. We'll go ahead and give yeah. the rest of it, too, because yep. Tanner, Tanner did, did his Oh, well. okay. oh yeah, you do it in rounds, don't you? Cool. So the I, palette, We haven't done that in a while. I'm sorry. It's okay. changed. Yeah. 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 The palette I gave a uh, 4.5. I thought it was Ooh. phenomenal. Wow. Reason being... Swanee going big. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> it holds up both with and without <laughs> water, which is impressive, because I've had some of these that I really enjoy the palette, just like this one. A little ethanol heavy, but it's Elijah Craig barrel proof. You kind of have to expect that. Yeah. Uh, but the nice thing is, is it held up with water. And it's a different experience with both. But both of them are good, in my opinion. I mean, I, I like the really like dark cocoa uh, that I got mm. with the water. And I also really like kind of the Stag Junior-esque like tobacco dark cherry like note that it has on the, the palate without yeah. the water. Yeah. So the fact that you can have both, and I didn't even have to let it sit with the water in it, which is amazing, because generally, you know, like Chad and Sarah, when they do their videos, they're like, wait, back in 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. No, you threw it in there, and it's good to go. Yeah. Which is insane. Uh, and then also just the oiliness is great. Oh, yeah. It just mouthfeel. coats your mouth. Yeah. So, I mean, exceptional mouthfeel. Exceptional mouthfeel. Yeah. 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 So it's... One of my favorites from this year. I, I think the only reason I didn't give it a five is there's probably palettes that I've enjoyed more. Like after just having the confiscated, there's room for improvement. I mean that's that's sure. phenomenal uh, as far as palette goes. But this this is good. Yeah. Sorry, I'll I'll, I'll touch on this in a second. Go ahead. Finish also four point five. Wow. I thought it was great. <laughs> yeah. I have no complaints. It's it's exactly what uh we talked about with the kitchen table release. Yeah. Kind of that oily drip with a little bit of honey, but mostly still hitting those dark notes in a lot of barrel. Mm. No complaints. This is the most positively that I think you've talked about any bourbon from I, this year. I I love it. It's great. This well, my bad. So but, put it against put against C nine one eight, what are you saying? C nine one eight, I feel like the nose kind of hit higher for me. Was more approachable. Yeah, the, it was more approachable, and then I would probably give it the same regards that I'm giving this, but it's again a different flavor profile. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, it's totally possible to have a favorite from Jim yeah. Beam and a favorite from Heaven Hill that are getting the same score with completely different flavor profiles. Mm. Uh, and this one does for me, and the fact that it's it, again a Heaven Hill release is crazy yeah. that it's that different. And price. Five. Woo! Yeah, this is the I see that. This is the best deal on bourbon for me. I mean it used to be Henry McKenna. It really is. But you know When's the last time you've seen Henry McKenna type deal? Yeah. I saw it yesterday. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah. It Very is coming flexible. back a little okay. bit more. But I've seen them shipping out a lot of stuff and I couldn't tell if it was for Bourbon Heritage Month or if it was just they legitimately have more yeah. to put out. Mm-hmm. Um which I think brings me to seventeen point five. Wow. Yeah. So that's up good. there. Yeah. It works. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad that you validated me a little bit because <laughs> I was yeah. very worried I was going to be the high point here. So no. Nice. No. no I, it's it's very good. So just going into into my review of it, uh, the nose. I I mean I have to agree. The nose is where, for me, it it's the weakest point of this bourbon. Uh, there is a little too much of the ethanol, but I also think that ethanol kind of like muddles up some of the notes that you're trying to trying to get through that's like what not, I, yeah i had problems picking stuff out yeah, yeah yeah um and with that being said i got some of the coffee dark chocolate notes but it wasn't as prevalent as what i was kind of hoping for so for that i mean i gave it a three and a half um i was dead on with you i think that that's specifically where where that kind of sits at for the palate for the palate i gave a four 
uh, that's when it really started to open up for me to really see the vanilla, the cocoa, the bitter, uh, the coffee beans. This bourbon for me and the palate and all the way through. Coffee beans. Really? Thank you. It's a great shout. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to find. 100%. Well, this, I could not put an. This a, bourbon to me is it. specifically coffee. Coffee with a with a hint of chocolate. Yeah, um, and I, I'm a big coffee drinker, so like it really just is resounding for me um, on that. So that's why I gave it a four. I think it's really solid. I think it's great. It's a great palette. You get those darker notes. Uh, I get. I want to like say I want to see some of that darker fruit, maybe like that plum. Or more of like a dark raspberry, yeah. but yeah, but I'm not getting as much of that. And that's not a knock on it. That's just I'm getting more of the, uh, more of the coffee kind of feel. And then for the palate, palate. I mean, sorry, for the finish, the finish for me. This is where it shines. Finish for me is a four and a half. I I ventured on a five. I ventured on a five. This just continues down. It has that oily drip. Um, continues with that aftertaste of the coffee, vanilla. It's like a mixture of vanilla and coffee beans for me. So, yeah. four and a half. And then price... 65, you said? 65. You get it at Kroger, fifty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Really? I'm aware. Oh, wow. <laughs> when well, you buy entire cases, okay, you start I'm, realizing the price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I'm getting it at Kroger for fifty nine ninety nine, it's a five. If it's $65, i will give it a four and a half. <laughs> there you go. I mean, you're. it is such a... For the what you're getting, the value of this is tremendous. So I want to say before uh, we, we go into my review, um, I did pull down the C918 to try a little bit of up next to this. Boy, I stand by that. Definitely best bourbon of 2018. Yeah, if I had to do anything to adjust my score from the last one I just did, I'd just add an extra point to the nose. You mean it, it like with the C918? Yeah. As yeah. opposed, yeah, I, I, I get that. I think that the C918 is just a hair more drinkable. It is, yeah. But not to say that the, the C919 is not. Yeah, but if I remember, Dude, this knows. No, oh, I know, right? <laughs> that is exactly true. That is what I mean. It, there is yeah, well, a reason. Wait a, wait a second. Wait a second. I want to. I want to get Tanner's. That's uh, true. I've never reaction. Yeah, that's right. Never done this one. Yeah. Okay, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> I think my knock on the palate for this one was it just didn't hold up as well in water. Which I'm about to try. Eighteen. Yeah, but that was it. And if, for a bourbon not to hold up well to water, oh, wow, it tastes exactly how the distiller intended. I'm mm -hmm. not too mad. <laughs> what a shame. Yeah. <laughs> C918 for me. Oh, I, I would easily take this over the C919. But. The C919 is really good, too. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it, it definitely is. So it's funny, Kurt, you and I actually varied by like a half a point okay. on our scores. Uh, I gave the nose a 3.75. <laughs> All right, oh, Chad. Wow. Meticulous. Yeah, I know, I know. Right. Gotten specific. But 20 point scale over here. And and it was, again, it offered a lot, but that al uh, the alcohol burn, the ethanol burn, was just a little bit too much for me. Um, that being said, I did enjoy what I did find, some of the sweeter notes, a little bit of the floralness. Floralness? Florality? I don't know. Um it's a battle that I'm constantly dealing with. What's the actual phrase that I want to use there? Florality sounds um, cooler. I like florality. If I can say it. <laughs> I think it's just floral. Florality. Floral. The floral yeah, whatever. Floral notes. Um, floral notes. There we go. Uh, I don't but think you I, plural it. Because it's already. Well, it's not a plural. It's more like a descriptor. Florals? Yeah. Florality. The Floralities. You would. You would. Like pluralities. Floralities. That well, makes quality sense, right? is still a like a. That's true. You know, and you say quality. That's a great discussion. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, semantics. Man, this is hundredth <laughs> episode. Everybody, it feels it feels like a like an early episode. <laughs> it's because I'm here, yeah. <laughs> derailing everything. But um, I, I I do still kind of get some of those uh, sweeter notes uh, on the nose. 
Um, there's a little bit of darkness that comes through, but I think that overall it's kind of overshadowed by the, uh, the, the alcohol burn. Uh, so 3.75 is what I gave the nose. I gave the palette a four. Um, really, I think it's solid all around. Um, it leaves just a little bit to be desired and really putting it up against the C918. I see what that is. You know, I see that the C918 is so much more well-rounded. It's so much more balanced, I think, than the C919 is. I always am going to want C918 again, you know, but I do appreciate that each batch is going to be different. Yeah. I mean, it is 100% going to change from batch to batch. Totally fine. That allows everybody to find something that they really like. And in this case, you know, this is not my favorite batch, but it's still really solid. And I think a four is, you know, still high praise. 4.5 is what I gave the finish, though. I think that the, the finish on this bourbon is just fabulous. It and beats it, the C918. Yeah, I, I, I think it, it, and it really makes me want to go back for another taste to make sure that I feel about it the way that I do, you know, and there's something about a finish that if it invites you to come back, that's important. You know, I, I think that's a, a really high quality uh, to find in a bourbon. I gave the price of four. Um, that's kind of typically what I give with the, uh, with the Elijah Craig barrel proofs. I could easily bump it up to a 4.5. Um, but just kind of in terms of consistency, you know, it, it does vary from batch to batch. Again, that is a little subjective, but I, I think that $65 is such a solid price for this level of quality with this bourbon. I mean, three batches a year, um, all the same price, generally about the same proof point, 12 years old. I mean, there's not even really that many 12-year-old bourbons that are on the market anymore. No. And so for this to exist at this accessible price point, I mean, that that's a really, really solid amount of money that you would be forking over for it. So that totals me at 16.25. <laughs> yeah. point scale. 16.25. So, I mean, it's it's totally a recommend for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Same. It, is this going to be my best bourbon of 2019? Don't think so. I think that it'll, it'll sit, you know, and I, I haven't gone through everything just yet. Um, I think that it's going to sit fairly well in comparison, but... There are still other releases from this year uh, that I've been more favorable with on. And yet know. to try. And yet to try. Indeed. You haven't had Weller Foolproof yet. Nope. We're going to make that happen. Going to try to. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I like doing a, a little impromptu review for uh, for the 100th episode. It seemed, it seemed appropriate, Yeah, I think. Yeah. Goodness gracious, y'all. I don't even know. Like, I know we've still got a couple things to do before we get out of here, but I don't want the, I don't want the hundredth episode to end. <laughs> Twenty-four hour episode. Have we done? Have we done a enough? marathon? Has it been special enough? I think so, man. Just all the, <laughs> all the like people calling in and stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, gonna, gonna make it that. special. Yeah, I for think sure. so too. And you know, it, it's we've got a lot of really exciting things that are coming here in the near future. And um, again, you guys have made it happen. You, the listeners. And we really do appreciate every moment that you have given to show your support and to let us know just how much you enjoy this show as well. And uh, we're going we're to keep it going. You know what? We're not done yet. We do still have tips and bits. We do. Or we recommend things. Doesn't yep. have to be bourbon. But uh, Tanner's, Tanner's excited for this one. You've got a whole year and a half. Yeah, that's up true. Of, he prepared. Uh, <laughs> Before that, though, I know on the drive home, he was, I mean, on the drive over here, he was going, what am I going to say? For I mean, you're not bits? wrong. I absolutely did that. <laughs> no. Uh, if I may, though, I want to want to thank you all for allowing me back on. Uh, if we're going to get super emotional because it's the 100th episode. Uh, I was in a very anxious part of my life when uh, I had to step away from the podcast. Uh, it was something I, I thought about for a long time. Uh, that was when work was at its heaviest and streaming was at its heaviest. And you can cut all this if you want. No, um, no, no. But 
I want to thank you all for bringing me back. It's been a very cool full circle thing. I hope that no one thought there was even a hatchet to need to be buried because there was no absolutely not. no ill will bef- uh, no. toward anybody here. Uh, and I love being back here. So thanks for having me. Well, I mean, I, I want to bring you back whenever you want to yeah, be a feel part free. of it too. You Hit know, me up. I mean, I'm, it's it, it. That's the thing is that this is always an open door policy with cool. with the podcast, and um, you know, you you were never not part of. <laughs> Of the family. Sure. It was just, you know, we've all got stuff going on. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, so we're, I'm just happy that you're, <laughs> you're here for this. This is really cool. We don't normally have, you know, all four of us in there. We've never had all four of us. In yeah, the that's true. Together. We've never no. met before. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, this is my favorite because when I first, when you first started the podcast, I would be the first one to listen to it every day. And I'd, yeah. I'd message you at like literally 7 a.m. and i was like this is great this i love this this is fantastic you guys tried what and like i would just i would freak out over it and now i feel like i'm the the fan that happens to get to sit on the podcast with the three other <laughs> with the three co-hosts and it's just like this is great man but it's yeah. i don't know it's cool it's a cool experience and well, now we get to all four all one. four yeah, yeah this is really cool no yeah. and, and, I, and that's I, a note Go, go ahead. No, I think I think this is going to happen more often. I don't yeah, think absolutely. that it has to be. I'm open whenever you want me. Just yeah, and it, it doesn't have to be every 100 episodes for sure. Sure, I yeah, mean, no, I'd love to come back more than that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've I know got, we joked about it, but we've got a lot of stuff planned for the, for the next couple of years. So cool. you know, I, I I think that you know the the more that we expand our little family of the show, I mean, it's all the better. Yeah, please. So man. yeah, hit me up. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So tips and bits. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I wanted to say it. No, man. Before we got done. Yeah. No. Again, I'm happy to have you here. It's cool. It's absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. And while we're on it, I'm just gonna. (laughs) (laughs) This is like for everybody. Just like. Well, Curtis is like I hate you guys. (laughs) (laughs) I've really been thinking about it, and I can't do this anymore. (laughs) No. One thing that I've always uh, uh, thought of was. Since Swan has become on, has come on to the podcast, that he's brought in another just like dynamic and dimension to the podcast, and uh, that's just a testament to you, man. Like, you know yeah, your dude. stuff, know how to like. Originally, it w- I was like, oh yeah, he knows how to fu- like where to find it, but <laughs> you give such like a knowledge and a different perspective on palette and price mm-hmm. and like being able to find this kind of thing. That I mean, that's that's really really cool, and that I think that has heighten the podcast to to another level yeah so i agree so yeah. man. to you as well yeah if you'll allow me you are a much better replacement than i was uh as far as like the <laughs> I three hosts go in the first You're 30 episodes <laughs> way more knowledgeable than i was uh if if anything else the show was upgraded when i left but uh yeah no i've i've learned something just drinking bourbon with you so thank you for letting me share the experience yes well and now that I guess you're you're back in the fold, yeah, I'm here. I, you know, you you're, you're going to learn more and more as it as That's it true. goes on too. And yeah. you know, again, the door's always open. Cool. So I've got four mics. Oh, yeah, I've got more than that, but I only have four inputs on this Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so tips and bits. Now yeah, we yeah, yeah. now we it. now we can get yeah. to it. Yeah, I I'll go first. Yeah. I never go first. Uh, I saw Joker this weekend. Oh, I'm seeing it Saturday. <sighs> Whatever your expectations are for it, throw them out the window. <laughs> Interesting. Throw In them a good way or to- bad way? Um, Just neutral? <laughs> it is... Look, it's a very subjective movie. Sure. People that I thought were going to love it hated it. Mm. People that I thought were going to hate it loved it. Interesting. And I personally really, really enjoyed it. Mm. Um. It is a deep dive into the the psyche of what it means to have a mental illness, and I it, there was such a an uproar over this movie before it came out, where everybody was like, "Oh, you know, we're gonna see more mass shootings, and we're gonna mm. see people, you know, take it as an excuse to do this, that, and the other." It's not. It's a warning. Mm. It's an examination, you know, and I I think that it does it in such a a, a a strong, convincing way that it it really did make sense for it to be approached in the way that it does. And I don't even really 
see it too much anymore as like a comic book movie because it really doesn't read like it sure i mean like yes the waynes are in it bruce wayne is in it and like the first time that you see bruce wayne on screen that's when you go it's a batman movie gotcha but but it doesn't feel like a batman movie you know right it, and and as long as you are kind of approaching it from that standpoint it's a character study it's a character study exactly so i i recommend it i think that it's um i think it's really good i really really enjoyed it the biggest thing that i've seen that gives me hope for this movie is people will constantly no matter who plays the joker they look back and like was it as good as heath ledger they took a totally different approach it seems like they kind of wanted it to be its own entity and you know when they did it with jared leto you're like ah, come on man. so so uh to to put it on that scale um Dark Knight did everything right with trying to take comic book elements and put them in the real world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So grounded. But then we look at Justice League or Batman v Superman or Suicide Squad, which lean really... Not going to talk about it. (laughs) It's a dumb movie. All right, I guess we are going to talk about it. Man, that movie was (laughs) tough. Batman shouldn't use guns. But anyway, so that leaned really heavily on the, the really comic book tropes. To, to make it work, sure. right? Joker is on the complete total end of the spectrum. I love that. It yeah, is, me too. It is very a exciting. real world storytelling experience. And so Dark Knight falls right in the middle of those two things, right? But, you know, if you took Joker plus Batman v Superman or Justice League or whatever, mm-hmm. add them together, divide it by two, that's what Dark Knight is. Gotcha. So you're seeing both ends of the spectrum uh, with with all of these movies. Um, but I, I did enjoy Joker quite a bit. I think it's one of the best DC movies to come out in the past five years. Not a hard bar to meet, but no. <laughs> Wonder Woman was good. Wonder Woman's a good movie. Wonder Woman yeah, was, was, was good. Movie. I would say aggressively fine. Did you? Oh, I really like Wonder Woman. Do you feel like people are kind of having this uproar about it because it seems so plausible? It seems so yes. real world. Okay, but I need to see a lot of now. a lot of the uproar is coming from people who haven't seen the movie, mm. and. Everybody who is who has said, "Oh, it's going to incite violence because of the, all the gruesome acts that you see and everything," it's not that violent. Do you think? I it's... mean, there there is some pretty gro- grotesque violence in it, but there's not much of it. Like you... if we're ter- talking in terms of like quality versus quantity, mm. quantity wise, there's quite a little bit of it, but quality. It's a little intense. Do you think it's just because of Aurora and people tie the Joker to events like that? No, no. Okay. I I think I think that is part of it. This is a conversation I'm not ready to get into sure, after yeah, a couple of glasses of bourbon. Right, but exactly. Uh, it's, it, it it's not it's not as bad I would say as everybody is making it out to be. Fair enough. But I do understand the arguments. I do understand the concerns that are going into it prior to the movie being released. Hmm. Having yeah. seen the movie, and maybe it's my own personal perspective, I don't see the need for the uproar. Understood. So. <laughs> it's also the climate that we're in. It so absolutely sure. is. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, that's my tips and bits. Go see Joker. It's a good yeah. movie. Anybody? Go next, please. Somebody. I got one. Go for it. So speaking of kind of a Batman-esque style thing, have you guys ever watched the show Person of Interest? Yes. No, I have not. I have. Yeah, so I didn't really notice this until I got about a season into it. It's very, very... Really solid show. Batman-esque, almost. Mm. Interesting. You've got kind of a, you know... interesting way to describe it. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, but it's... I mean, you have... There's a character named Harold that reminds you quite a bit of uh, Alfred. Yeah. But with more of like a hacking ability. And then you've got uh, John Reese, which is like a kind of former CIA agent that helps people. Jim Caviezel, if it helps. Yeah, that's who the actor plays it. The guy who was Jesus in Passion of the Christ. Got it. Yeah. yeah, and it's 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 really good. And the thing that my only complaint with it is every season is like twenty five episodes. It's ridiculously long, and they're all like forty minutes a piece. But I did I I get bored probably about twenty episodes in, and then it ramps back up to finish, and then it starts over, and every season is a completely new chronicle of just absolute interesting strangeness and it's kind of it's real big brother you know they've got like a they've got like a system that's kind of like a know-all and it sends them numbers of people that are potentially in danger but it sends a social security number to them and they basically have to determine well is this the perpetrator or is this the person that's going to get killed 
because something's going to happen with this person in the next 24 to 72 oh. hours. Oh, they were yeah. the person I of like, interest. I like how that <laughs> can be flipped the show. on its head. Yeah, I like that. So it's, it's been on for a while, hasn't it? It did. It, it's five seasons it's What's on it Netflix. On? Yeah, it's gone, but it was. It's just fun to watch. What was it on originally? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it was ABC, like ABC. I wanted CBS? to say CBS. That Maybe. sounds right. Not entirely. It sounds more CBS like a CBS sounds right. show. Yeah. I'm so yeah. used like to seeing the little uh, icon down in the bottom right or bottom left, and this is nothing because it's on Netflix, but. I don't know. It's good. It's worth watching. There's tons of it if you want to. 25 episodes per season, five seasons. I mean, it's up there. You got like 120 episodes. Yeah. So it's it's fun. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so for my tips and bits, it's pretty basic, but uh, I've really been getting into like FIFA and uh, like Premier League so specifically. Basic. It really is. So basic. <laughs> but... <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just yeah. kidding. I no. mean, I'm just really into sports in All general. Right. Who's your club? Who's my club? I don't have a club yet, so that's actually pretty exciting. So I would like I'm to introduce you to it. to uh, this wonderful group of of players. Uh, they fall under the Manchester United. Uh, yes, uh, I have been um, introduced. Yes, Tottenham if you're Hotspurs. if you're looking for that um, is my roommate's uh, favorite team. Let's go Hotspurs. He watches <laughs> he watches the Tottenham Hotspurs every single Saturday morning. They have cool unis. I like their unis. They do um universities yes honestly so i've ever since i've only played the game i've never like like fifa like for ps4 or xbox i've never actually like gotten into watching uh soccer but now i have i'm a big bayern munich fan oh that's funny the that's uh it's a german club that's actually the friend who's crashing on my couch that's our favorite team no way yeah. huh. okay yeah so i've just really been getting into soccer lately which is weird because I'm, I wouldn't say I'm like a soccer fan. You're going to have a soccer episode? We might. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, we I, might. <laughs> I don't know how to tie that all in, but we'll figure something out. Yeah, We've we'll had a Star that. Wars episode, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out. Which was a very surprising tie-in. Go back and listen to that. <laughs> yeah. Chad had some very strong feelings about The Last Jedi. Okay. <laughs> very, very strong feelings. Uh, but anyway. yeah, I've, I've really been getting into soccer. So, I'm here for go it, man. out there. And, like, I love soccer. Bundesliga. Uh, Excuse you. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, and the pr- Premier League, all of it. Yeah, it's really good. Seems like a great excuse to get day drunk. Games there, mm-hmm. like 100. percent Or like 7 a.m. and you're just like, oh, yeah, this is great. And it's like, why am I ordering they, beer at 7 a.m.? They start those chants and like you don't know what the chant actually is, and so you're just, just kind of along. Yeah, you're just <laughs> yeah. mumbling nonsense. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tanner? Uh oh, oh, oh. Have I been waiting on this? Uh, <laughs> it's been so, years. Yeah. Uh first of all, I am not much of a TV person. Uh I do not watch a lot of shows. I don't have a lot of time to do it. Uh that being said, the best show I maybe have ever seen uh outside of the newsroom, which is my favorite show of all time, is Fleabag. If you've not watched oh. Fleabag, Holy shit, that show <laughs> is perfect. I've not seen it yet. It's one of the which I know it just won a, a ton of a ton of Google. Did, I, I yeah. saw it over the summer. Um it's only six hours. The entire series is six hours. If that isn't a good enough good enough pitch, just wait. It is the best written comedy show I think I've ever seen, and I love Always Sunny so much. But I think this is better written. It blows, in my opinion, stuff like The Office and Parks of the Rec out of Parks and Rec out of the water. Parks of the Rec. Parks of the Rec. Shut up. <laughs> uh, it blows it. It blows it out of the water. Like this, those shows hold no candle to this show. It is so well written. Uh, Phoebe Waller Bridges is maybe the best mind in writing right now. Who is the main star and the yeah. head writer of the show? Um, it is phenomenal. It has such a unique perspective. It's one of the first shows I've ever watched. That's written and like um emphasizes women's sexuality in a comedy it's fantastic uh the opening sequence is if it doesn't hook you nothing will it's amazing um, huh. it's absolutely fantastic i cannot recommend the show enough i don't want to say anything else about it one of the best looking comedies i think i've ever seen probably the best looking comedy directed so well cinematography is in- insane on that show uh it's fantastic and it's I, on where uh, amazon prime okay I have not watched it yet because I just haven't gotten around to it. But didn't you recommend Slater Kinney? Letter Kinney? Yes. Letter Kinney, excuse yes, me. Yes, I yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still think that's a great show. And there's a new season coming up. 
Slater Kinney is a band from. Uh, it's Letter Kinney, not right? But Slater, Slater, there's a band yeah. called Slater Kinney. That's uh, what's her name from uh, Portlandia. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Anyway, Letter Kinney. Okay. Sorry. Have you ever watched Letter Kinney? No. What? Apparently, it's amazing. You mentioned the newsroom. Fantastic. Yes, yes finally Love someone who's seen it. Oh, the newsroom's the best. It's my favorite show of all time. Yeah. Fleabag is right there, though. I've never seen like interesting. This is better to me than Breaking Bad. That's this is awesome. better to me than Stranger Things. I know it's very. It's going to be very. Like people are who are going to be into it are going to be super into it. I know some people who wouldn't like it at all, but right. it's oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, I I watched it on a recommendation from my mom actually, which is very odd when you see the show. <laughs> uh, but I actually put it on a different monitor while I was working on something, and by the end of the first episode, I stopped what I was doing to watch it because it was so funny. I was like <laughs> by myself, <laughs> gut laughing at the show. It's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's awesome. Can't recommend it enough. If you should watch the letter, Kenny. Okay. If it's not going to put a candle to, like, right, to yeah, what yeah, those yeah. shows. I, it's just a good show. I think it's funny. Okay, it's cool. a Canadian comedy. Gotcha. Look, I think this I might have recommended this before, but um, uh, every fall. You already had your tips and I bits, know, man. But Get I got out of here. I gotta... We could do a round two. I'm down for a round two. <laughs> I've missed a lot this of episodes. This is the rest of the podcast. Yeah. 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 Um, I think I've recommended this before. This is going to sound really strange, but uh, every fall, uh, Lucy gets in the mood to watch Gilmore Girls. Mm. Good show. I enjoy the crap out of Gilmore Girls. Never watched it. It, it is solid yeah. early 2000s humor mm. from the CW. And it's good, man. I, 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 I enjoy it. I mean, it's not like a, a super thinker, but it does kind of suck you in. Mm. And, and the and, banter between Lorelai. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's absolutely great. And yeah. Rory. Sorry, I didn't mean to plug in a second. No, it's good. Though. <laughs> a second good recommendation. Show. Do I get a but, second one? Yeah, fine. Whatever. Can we all give second ones? <laughs> Candy corn and peanuts, man. Mix them together. They're fantastic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Have you not? Big in the okay. Halloween. <laughs> Have you all heard of the, the thing that people do that put peanuts in Coke? Have you all heard of this? Oh, I you're have. doing weird stuff. Now. I, I discovered this that. on stream oh. the other day, and everybody was like, what? You've never heard of this? I was like, no, I've never heard of it. It looks disgusting, but I've heard it's a thing. People put peanuts in their Coke, and then they eat it as they drink it. I've been told that too. Isn't it weird? It's, it's like so a thing. Weird. You can look it up. It's been a thing oh since like gosh. the 20s. I heard about it and I was like, uh. Right? Not so going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> like it, if you look it up, it's like there's no specific origin, but it dates back to the 1920s. So anyway. Huh. I don't know about that. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> you said candy corn and peanuts. It tastes like a payday. It's great. Okay. I can see that for sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> Does anybody else have a round two? <laughs> AEW. They're a new professional wrestling company. Oh my company. gosh. I've, I've heard such I've good things this. about uh, AEW. So the Wednesday Night Wars are on their way. Uh, NXT, which is a WWE company, yeah. versus AEW. We're about to hit the the next wave of professional wrestling. And as a wrestling fan, I can't be more excited. Uh, oh, AEW's my, my awesome. dad has been hyping it up like, oh, like no so other. It's, they've already had their first episode. Second episode is actually as we record this. So I'm gonna have to go back and watch it. But, uh, oh, thanks dude. It's uh Oh no, it's fine. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's <laughs> really like, interesting don't do it to finally have yeah. a company like since WCW, we haven't had a company that parallels WWE like this. Um, so it's really interesting to just see that happen. And as a wrestling fan, my entire life, it's really cool to see it happen. So shout out to AEW. Did, did you know that I went to Monday Night Raw with my dad? Oh no, really? Months ago. That's awesome. It was something else. Yeah, we'll wrestling's talk about in, that off Wrestling's air. interesting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. This was episode one hundred, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you all so much for listening to. I, I know that there have been people who have listened to every single episode of this show so far, and I, I have said it already. I'll say it again. The show could not have been possible without you. Um, I've been saying it for months, for saying it, been saying it for the past two years. Um, I want to keep this show going as long as it possibly can. Man, th this is just proof that that is totally plausible. Mm -hmm. And I I'm excited to see where everything grows uh, from here on out. Um, I <laughs> It feels like I'm you know doing an Oscar speech or, or whatever, <laughs> but like... Um, you three guys have, have been so important. Chad and Sarah, uh, my entire family, really, um, they've all been on the show at least once. Um, my wife, of course, who has allowed me the opportunity to take time out of um, my day and our day together uh, to pursue something that has been uh, a huge passion of mine and has grown into something that um, I didn't even think... <laughs> 
could could be uh, what it is now. Um, all all of our our little group chats that we have, um, everybody who supports us on Patreon, um, you know, everybody who has allowed us to come to events and talk to the distillers and the the representatives of the brands and everything, uh, allowing us that opportunity to connect and grow our relationships and and make this something that we never really thought. I mean, we, I, I remember our first conversations about the show and it was like, it's going to be three guys just sitting around talking about bourbon and, <laughs> and, and, you know, our, our relationship with it. But she, it's, oh, it's like a Facebook it, it, group with over a hundred people in it. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, but, but it's, it's so much more than that any anymore. And, you know, I, I cannot wait to see where it goes past this episode. Um, and I'm going to try to stop rambling, but just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cue the music. I, can, I cannot say it. <laughs> Play Get them off stage. Get them off stage. I know. Yeah, all right. I know. I know. But um, I don't even know what next week's going to be. <laughs> I haven't even thought that far ahead. I put so much like uh, uh, expectations into episode 100 that I was like, 101 is going to be whatever. <laughs> We're going to go back to episode... Oh my gosh. What if we went back to episode one and did the blind flight like we did? I feel like it's only natural. Well, that'd be cool. That would be interesting. But also oh. Wild Turkey 101. Yeah, that's yeah what I but thought there's too. also Makers 101 and... Just do all the 101s. Yeah. Isn't yeah, there, we uh, might have to do a 101 blind flight. There's a... Um, yeah, we'll see. What is it? The Willet Will it does like an XO something, I think, that's one. Yeah, the Pure Kentucky XO. Mm-hmm. I've got that mm-hmm. as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. Fine. So episode 101 is going to be you right here first. Yeah, we've figured it out. So thank you all so much for listening. Of course, we really do appreciate it. Guys, where can people find you on social media? Uh, on Twitter, you can find me Kurt underscore con 15 and on Twitter, Kurt con. Uh, sorry, on Instagram, Kurt con. There we go. I'm on uh, Instagram and Facebook as my bourbon finder. Self plug time. Twitch.tv slash dormstreams. Ah, uh, here we go. Uh, and at dormstreams on Twitter and Instagram. Dude, I want to so badly do a, a old school game Twitch. Do it while I'm drinking bourbon. Yes. Like I, I, Let's I would co-stream it. Let's do it. Oh my god. Yeah, can we do a so collab for that? Yeah, come over. We can do like Heck a. Heck yes. It's my bourbon podcast stream. Oh, let's do okay. it. Okay. All right. 100%. We're gonna we're right. gonna make it happen. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. Like next month, within the next. Yeah. Month. Let's do it. No. Right, cool. For sure. For sure. All right. I play through like Super Mario World, and every time somebody <sighs> dies, they take, take a, a huge something. shot. Yeah. <laughs> a Perry pour worth yeah. of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Craig We're staying on a Friday then because that's fine. I got a couch. I got a recliner. You're welcome. There we go. Uh, I am at Bureau to 1492 on all social media channels. If you'd like to follow up with the show, it is at my bourbon pod on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Uh, if you have questions or comments, you can send them to this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com. We would love to read them out on the show. If you would be so kind as to send them in, please give us a five star rate and review on iTunes. It is very, very easy. If you are on the iTunes podcast app, you just swipe down a little bit from the main page of the podcast you can give us a little review uh we'll start reading some of those out too uh as well as they kind of roll in uh here over the next couple of months uh if you could check out all of our apparel and merch at bourbonshop.threadless.com that would be fantastic uh we're gonna have a free shipping promotion go on uh here very soon in celebration of the 100 episode anniversary and then last but not least as we mentioned before patreon is a big way to support the show that is patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast for as little as a dollar a month you can help this show continue for another 100 episodes Uh, i know a dollar a month doesn't sound like a whole lot but it really does mean everything to us uh, in terms of what it goes towards editing traveling making this show uh you know happen just in terms of communication Uh, And really, just in general, making the show happen. I've had a couple of glasses of bourbon. All right, I'm celebrating tonight. So, whatever. Um, That about does it, though. Thank you all so much. (laughs) I never thought that we would get this far. I honestly did not think that we were going to get to 100 episodes. But, like, I, you know, it's come a really, really, really long way from us sitting around in our, our living room at our townhouse with rock band microphones <laughs> and not knowing what the heck we were even getting into, but... Or what we were drinking. Or what yeah. we were drinking. Or how to yeah, talk exactly. about it. Yeah, but, even, but, uh, yeah, not even what to say about it. But this is, um, this is really just kind of a, a dream come true. And uh, 
I'm excited for the for the future. So thank you all so much for for allowing us uh, to to do this, for being a part of it. I'm ready for I'm ready for the next 100. Let's do it. We'll see you all next week. But until then, I'm Perry. I'm Curtis. Swan. I'm Tanner. And this is my Bourbon Podcast. Thank you.